Seiko looking for the one two with Cox. He gets it back. Short Seiko scores a cracker. Welcome to Clark Stadium, Edmonton, Alberta. Beautiful day for the North American Soccer League matchup this afternoon between FC Edmonton and San Antonio, the team that handed the Eddies a defeat, their fourth of the season last weekend, a 2-0 defeat to San Antonio. Today, the rematch, we're a quarter of the way through the season. FC Edmonton currently in sixth place. Good afternoon, I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor today and a big game for FC Edmonton today, Steve. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, San Antonio is going to start a little bit of a different lineup today, but uh, Edmonton's still expecting a very similar game plan to what they saw last week. San Antonio likes to drop very deep, defend, put a lot of numbers in the box, and then worry about the counterattack. And, and that's the way San Antonio plays. Big physical team that uh, uses some size and some strength in the middle of the park. Let's take a look at the matchups this afternoon. FC Edmonton back at home against San Antonio. San Antonio with a good record there. Four, two, and one in FC Edmonton. As you can see, two, one, and four at the moment. Yeah, yeah we're going to take a look at uh, some of the highlights from uh, the last game between uh, San Antonio and FC Edmonton at Hero Stadium. And, uh, you know, it was a very, very tough game. And this was a, a controversial penalty call, to say the least. Uh, Edmonton protested this, and some of the guys are quietly talking that they just still don't think that was a penalty at all. Uh, Campos brought down by Hatchie in the box, and then, uh, and then the finish on the penalty. Uh, I think this was the best chance for Edmonton here. I think it was Seiko that put that just right over the bar. But Edmonton didn't really create a lot of chances in this game. And uh, there is Ryan Cochran, who isn't playing today again. He's being rested, who scores on the header to give uh, San Antonio the 2-0 lead. Uh, but uh, San Antonio plays a very physical game again. They defend very, very well. And that's the reason that they've got uh, four wins out of their first seven games. Uh, again, look at only seven goals against in seven matches. That's an excellent record. Puerto Rico Island is still uh, top of the table there with five wins from eight. And FC Edmonton, they're in sixth place, two from seven, but very much hoping to get going this afternoon, Steve. Yeah, and the, the thing is, they, this is only their third home game of the season, so, uh, or at least in the NASL home game of the season. The interesting thing is going to be looking at, uh, at the lineups going forward. Uh, it looks like Lance Parker's going to get the start and goal today for, for, for Edmonton, and uh, it's pretty unusual. I can't think of any other time that a team will be in its eighth game of the season and has used four goalkeepers. He'll be the fourth guy to start between the sticks for Edmonton this season. And four in a season is something. Four in uh, two months is, is really something. Let's take a look at the keys to the game, Steve. I uh, really believe the first thing that we have to talk about is the walking wounded. Edmonton uh, did have some injuries. Uh, Fabian Vorb broke his nose in the game last week. Uh, Paul Hamilton and Matt Lamb picked up some knocks. Uh, San Antonio plays a very physical style. Lamb and Hamilton will both start today. But again, this is a, a situation where, where they have to manage manage through. We'll see if they can both play 90 minutes or if they're both available to play 90 minutes after uh, after having some knocks from last week. The uh, the next key will be San Antonio's schedule. I mentioned that Ryan Cochran wasn't playing. In fact, a lot of their key players aren't playing today. Uh, Kevin Harms is on the bench. Pablo Campos is on the bench. Uh, this is a team that has uh, got a big uh, U.S. Open Cup match on, on Tuesday against Houston, 48 hours from now, back in Texas. And they're, they're getting ready to start their best line for that game. So some of those guys are being rested today. So some of the big guns from San Antonio are on the bench. And that includes Kevin Harms, the Canadian, who uh, scored the first ever winning goal in this team's history. 
And uh, really, they need uh, Edmonton needs their star players to, to come to the fore. Uh, Sean Seiko needs to, to do a little more than he did last week. Uh, you know, when Sean's at the best, he is the best 11 player for, for, for FC Edmonton. He was an all-star last year. And uh, we, we look here against Carolina and, 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 and what he can bring from where, wherever he is in the park. Uh, he's, uh, he's lethal, uh, can shoot from anywhere within 30 yards. He, he can tee it up. And, and Seiko's got to be a big part, as does Yashir Pinto up front for Edmonton. They need, they need a little more from him as well. That's Steve Sandor and myself, Gareth Hampshire, live from Clark Stadium. The starting lineup for FC Edmonton today. The big news, Lance Parker in goal. And we watched with horror last season when he had that terrible broken arm. He's back, he'll start in goal today. As Steve mentioned, the fourth goalkeeper to start for FC Edmonton this season. We've got in the center, Hatchie and Hamilton. Rago, who's been playing really well, gets another start on the right-hand side. Lassonde is back at left back for Brice Lassonde. A midfield three, Van Leerdam, Matt Lamb, and Chris Cooey back as captain today. And the front three, Sean Seiko, Paul Cray getting a surprise start today alongside Yoshia Pinto up front. Yeah, and you know, Lance, you talk about bad luck. When he was recovering from that compound fracture, he actually fractured his foot in training in, in Miami in the off season, trying to come back from the arm. So he actually had two separate injuries uh, that, that hampered his return, but almost a year after, uh, after he got hurt in that game against Carolina, he's back in the lineup. And, you know, this is the Edmonton goalie that has the most MLS experience. He played with Chivas USA. Uh, you know, it brings a little more experience to the position than they have with the three other guys that they have. But uh, again, really interesting to see, again, with the communication with the back four, another keeper coming in and how that's going to work out. Good luck to Lance Parker today and FC Edmonton. We'll be kicking off shortly. Join us for that. FC Edmonton coming up against San Antonio next. And Seiko runs through and buries the right-footed shot. Hunger is our planet's greatest solvable problem. Around the world, people everywhere are affected by hunger. Let's make a difference. Join us and help stop hunger. Text WFP Hunger to 45678 to donate $5 to the World Food Program. Beautiful conditions, perfect weather. It's a glorious Sunday afternoon in Alberta. FC Edmonton about to go head to head with San Antonio at Clark Stadium. Good atmosphere in the stadium today. 1,400 people in the stands and a couple of people choosing to stand by the railings as well for their view. FC Edmonton just uh, getting ready to kick off here. Lance Parker back in goal today, Steve. Yeah, the, until the, uh, the renovations to the stadium are complete, this is going to be the capacity and it's going to still be probably a couple more games before that gets done. Uh, some Obviously some permit issues with the city that still need to get ironed out. But uh, this, uh, this stadium will eventually get up to about a 5,000 seat capacity by uh, some sometime in the season. But right now with the one bleacher up, it is 12 to 1,400 here. But they are standing room tickets and I believe that's going to be the situation next week as well. Very warm down on the pitch there as Paul Hamilton and the Edmonton players are gathering. 18 degrees Celsius. A uh, little bit of a breeze as you can see with the flag but just about perfect conditions for the match this afternoon. The San Antonio players all in white and they're attacking the goal to our right and FC Edmonton all in black and they're defending the goal to our right attacking the goal to our left. They will kick off 
from right to left in this first half. Big game for FC Edmonton today. Yeah, and I think we say very warm, but I think it's very warm for us. I think the people who are watching this down in Texas, uh, 18 Celsius is somewhere in the 60s. And for us, that might be a warm spring day here in Canada and in Edmonton. But I'm sure with uh, the San Antonio Scorpions, this uh, feels maybe a little bit cool to them. I mean, they'll play on the turf as well, so they know what it's like that the heat coming off the turf uh, at Hero Stadium. I'm sure it's no different than they have here at Clark. Paul Craig gets us underway. Craig getting the start today for FC Edmonton up front. And Cooey playing a diagonal ball to the left-hand side, which Seiko is chasing down. Pinto as well, but San Antonio cleared a halfway. Up goes Hachi, wins his first header. A good, solid first touch from him. San Antonio all in white. And FC Edmonton playing in the traditional home black colors today. Free kick for San Antonio. Jose Soto walks away from it and it's played forward to the right hand side. Lasson beaten in the air that drops to the edge of the penalty area and a chance for San Antonio to get an early cross in from the right hand side and a warning for FC Edmonton as the shot just blazes over the angle of the crossbar and that's the first effort of the match just over the top from San Antonio. Yeah, and I think we, ha we have a situation there where uh, you, you have uh, Ewan Purcell there winning, that, winning the battle with uh, Fabrice Lasson for that first ball. And again, that's a huge height advantage uh, that we've seen in the previous games with other teams having over FC Edmonton's back line. And again, San Antonio is a, a of, of relative giants compared to the FC Edmonton lineup. And, and you know, that's uh, almost a foot taller Purcell than Lasson there. And that sets up that scoring chance. Lance Parker from the resulting goal kick back in the lineup today. The fourth goalkeeper getting a start for FC Edmonton this season. And uh, San Antonio plays on a very small park, very similar to what uh, Edmonton had at Foot Field last year. Very narrow uh, 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 playing surface and that sort of place, that physical style they like to play. They're going to be playing on a much wider pitch here on the road and we'll see how that changes the way that they play. Ewan Purcell again breaking away down the right hand side, he's been an early threat for San Antonio, this cross he doesn't manage to get into the box and it goes out for a goal kick and Lance Parker getting another touch of the ball and uh, he's been playing reserve team matches where he's done well but uh, still definitely some trepidation, your first big game back after such a horrible injury. Yeah, and, and, and you have to think, you're only human if that's not in the back of your mind the first time that you're going to go up for a cross or for a corner. Uh, you know, what happened last year when he went over the back, trying to cover, uh, over Etienne Barbara's back, trying to, to cover that cross and landing on the turf. Uh, you, you really hope that you get over those mental demons pretty quickly and then settle into the game. Uh, you know, we all, we all hope to see that Lance gets back in the groove and, and can play like he did last year for this team because he was very good in May and June last year for FC Edmonton when he got a chance to play. Van Leerdam winning the ball in the midfield. It's Seiko on the left-hand side. And he wins a free kick for FC Edmonton. From right to left, they attack. Three minutes on the watch. Nil-nil so far, but a chance here. About 25 yards from goal, just left of center. And this will shape up well, probably for Seiko, who's been... Uh, delivering these crosses with pinpoint accuracy this season. Yeah, I'm just wondering here, he's going to pop this one into the box. Uh, Paul Hamilton, our Edmonton's best player in the air, has already lined up at the top of the box for a run. Or if, if Sean's going to try to have a go here. I uh, don't really know. He has options either way. He'll probably keep San Antonio guessing here a little bit. Seiko over the ball with this free kick from the left-hand side. He's uh, drifted it into the far post, beautifully delivered. It just didn't get a touch. It was still uh, on target, and the goalkeeper scurried over there, Daryl Sattler, and made the save, but a dangerous ball in. That's actually a much more difficult save than it looks, because when you, how many times have we seen free kicks like that where the guy goes in front to, to, to get a touch on the ball, doesn't get it, and it goes in because the keeper's almost got a gamble that that, that, that player, in that case Pinto, is going to get a touch, and the ball's going to get redirected, and that ball can slide inside the post. Lasson with a crossfield ball from the left, headed down nicely by Pinto. The scraps picked up by Cooey to the edge of the penalty area. Matt Lamb trying to get on the end of a loose knockdown. Lamb chasing this on the left-hand side. That's good composed defensive play by Sotu to get that one away. And Lasson concedes the throw in the right-hand side for San Antonio. The score goalless. And it will be Fabian Kling with the throw in down that right-hand touchline to the edge of the penalty area. And the ball bobbling just in front of Paul Hamilton. Hamilton will clear this one up the left-hand side. It'll be picked up by Kling again. Van Leerdam can't take it off him, and Soto chases to the edge of the penalty area here. From inside that 
right challenge. Looking to switch play to the left-hand side. Very good defensive header away by Rago in the right-back position, who's then pulled down. Antonio Rago, one of the standout defenders for FC Edmonton this season, wins a free kick. It's nil-nil at Clark Stadium. Very quick pace to start this game through the first uh, four and a half minutes. I think these teams are playing at a faster pace than at any time that they played last week in San Antonio. This, uh, this, this game, we've seen some good chances both ways already, and uh, really some quick attacks by both teams. Not a lot of uh, trying to pass the ball literally laterally in midfield. They're really trying to move forward, trying to create something. It's going sort of end to end right now. It's with the opposite goalkeeper, Sattler, who made a good gather from the Seiko free kick moments ago. FC Edmonton nil, San Antonio nil. First time San Antonio playing in Canada today. It's Clark Stadium, the venue. There's not a cloud in the sky for this match. It's gorgeous in Edmonton this afternoon. Thrown out by Parker to the right-hand side and Rago. Just a player, nice little short pass for Hamilton. Hamilton not the captain today. Chris Cooey back in the lineup and gets the armband back as the club captain. You mentioned that uh, it's the first time that this uh, franchise has played in Canada, but there's a lot of players on this team that have experience in Canada. Matt Gold, who we see in the, in the holding midfield position there, Played Toronto FC last year. Uh, on the bench, you'll find Wes Knight, Blake Wagner, and Kevin Harms, all former Vancouver Whitecaps. And Greg Janicki starts today in the back line for San Antonio, another former Vancouver Whitecap. So you have a lot of players that have played quite a bit in Canada. And I would believe actually Matt Gold played against FC Edmonton last year in the, uh, in the uh, Canadian Championship. Kling's throw down the right-hand side towards the edge of the FC Edmonton penalty area, scrambling just on the edge of that box. Hamilton volleying it up into the air. Pinto's underneath it, Kling winning it. Soto dispossessed by Paul Craig back in the lineup today for FC Edmonton. And now Hamilton. Hamilton midway inside his own half. He's got the right boot that he wraps around the ball, tries to switch it to the left-hand side, but nicely headed back to his goalkeeper by Fabian Kling, and it's back with Sattler, still nil-nil. But Edmonton here, they want to they, they want to keep the ball on the ground against San Antonio. You want to get this team moving and running. Uh, playing the balls in the air, you're playing to their strength. You, you need to, uh, to keep the ball on the ground, some short passes, use that width of the field, get the players wide, and, and try to get this uh, San Antonio team spread out. San Antonio breaking down the left-hand side, and in the end conceding a goal kick for FC Edmonton. We'll do our best to pick out the San Antonio players, but the white numbers on white shirts do make it a bit of a commentator's nightmare. Today. Yeah, it was a graphic designer's dream, but uh, practically, I think probably for officials, for color commentators, for anyone, uh, someone's going to say that white numbers on, on white jerseys not such a good idea, guys. Paul Hamilton playing a square pass to Hatchie. Hatchie back in the lineup today, left-footed crossfield ball to the right-hand side. It's a peach of a pass. Craig gets there, does he just know? In fact, it's just gone behind for a goal kick, but a nicer uh, crossfield ball that stretched the defense there. Yeah, again, though, I think uh, they didn't really have a lot of support there running forward. Again, just to, to reiterate the point I made earlier, Edmonton's really got to start making some short passes on the ground. They got to be, be spreading this team out, making San Antonio chase the ball a little bit. There's the goal kick forward for San Antonio. It's nil nil, FC Edmonton. In San Antonio. Craig trying to bring this ball down on the edge. Just wouldn't drop for him. Pinto is chasing it on the right hand side. Pinto's come away with it. Good situation here for FC Edmonton. Pinto just holding up the shot there for Van Leerdam, who blazes it over the top. Wasn't a bad break from Lamb, came in from the right. Pinto just holding it up for Van Leerdam. A good shooting chance, but he couldn't keep it down. Yeah, Matt does. Matt Lamb does well here on the outside, beating the San Antonio defender to the ball and getting a good ball in the middle. Pinto does a really good job. Just a one-touch hold-up for Van Leerdam. Ball would sit down for the for the Dutch midfielder, and it goes over the bar. But still, a decent chance for Edmonton there. And really, they've already carved out maybe more chances in the first uh, few minutes of this game than they did through 90 minutes in San Antonio, where they really didn't trouble Daryl Sattler all that much. That was a 2-0 loss last Saturday. FC Edmonton's fourth no, loss of the season. Seven points from seven games. So important that uh, they get rolling at home in this home stand. And it's nil-nil so far. FC Edmonton and San Antonio. Edmonton attacking that goal to our left. Lamb trying to steal the ball back, but it's up to halfway by San Antonio. Cleared by Hatchie. Good solid defensive start by him. And a throw in for San Antonio on the left-hand side. 
Yeah, pace has sort of slowed down the last couple of minutes. Uh, a lot of uh, set pl set plays now, a lot of dead ball situations the last couple of minutes after a, a pretty good free-flowing first five minutes of the match. San Antonio breaking down the left-hand side. FC Edmonds are trying to win the ball back. A real challenge and scrap for possession on that right wing. Craig trying to go past his man and wins a throw-in on the right wing. Edmonton playing from right to left. Goalless so far with 10 minutes on the watch. Rago playing the ball into the center and Hamilton. Hamilton forward to Van Leerdam right in the middle of the pitch. Switching play to the left touch line. Lassant moves in onto his right foot. Cross to the far post. Lamb takes it on the chest. Beautifully set up there. And the shot deflected over the top by Sean Seiko. It's a corner kick for FC Edmonton. Yeah, that one looked like it was uh, deflected up, up top by... Uh, well, it was uh, pitch Cole in there from uh, former Puerto Rico Islander that we've uh, seen actually score against FC Edmonton last year, but uh, it gets a touch there. But again, a really good, uh, good, good layoff, and it looked like that's uh, so that Edmonton's got some some success within the box is is having some of the top of the box to run onto balls. Right wing corner from Seiko goes to the near post. Chance for the shot by Hamilton. It's bobbling around in there. And in the end, just scrambled wide by Paul Hamilton. Almost a chance, not a clear cut one. It remains goalless and it's a goal kick to the visitors. Yeah, you, you see here in the formation that even in the goal kick setting up, San Antonio's got uh, four defenders and two holding midfielders back. They're not really spreading out too, too much. They're uh, really being uh, very conservative going forward. And this is sort of what FC Edmonton expected to see. Seiko beaten in the air this time, but Lassonde wins the second faves possession. It's over on the left flank this time for Walter Ramirez. Gets his foot on the ball and plays it nicely for a teammate. The build up down that left wing. San Antonio trying to put the pressure down Edmonton's right hand side and Hamilton coming over to tidy that one up. Put that one out for a throw in to San Antonio, taken quickly, still nil-nil, approaching 12 minutes. Last time San Antonio went up the field there too, there were three, the three attacking players were going up each, each side, down each wing and went up the middle, and there was no support coming from the midfield, they were choosing to hang back, and there was a, a lot of green area in between there, and it seems that they're, they're far more concerned about the counter and Edmonton coming back, and they're gonna take their chance and maybe try for some individual brilliance. Free kick has been given for a handball to FC Edmonton. And in the meantime, Hatchie's gone down for something that may have happened after the ball. Uh, still nil-nil. Hatchie just involved in the initial incident. And then as he jostles for possession just by the touchline, just falling a bit awkwardly. Plays back underway though, still nil-nil. Hamilton trying to play a ball to the left-hand side and gets Seiko involved, but can't find it. It's going to be for Hachi to bring the ball out of defense this time from the clearance. Nice one too that Hachi played with Matt Lamb. And Hachi goes down under the challenge and will win a free kick for FC Edmonton this time. I think it was Purcell there that left his leg in as uh, Hatchie had already played the ball through and was looking to do some support there. And uh, San Antonio there disrupting the play. And, and uh, you know, when there's no card there, uh, it's actually not a bad strategy if you're, you know you're not going to get carded. And I know you don't know that or not doing that. But uh, uh, in that case, it works out pretty well because you break up what looked to be a, a pretty decent Edmonton break going forward. Hatchie to the right-hand side and Hamilton. Hamilton. Uh, play the ball back to Hatchy, and now to the left flank. Seiko with another touch in field to Lamb, who makes another nice turn. Real tidy player, Matt Lamb. He's done well this year. Added a real nice uh, creative element to FC Edmonton. Seiko to the right hand side, and Rago. Rago playing it nicely back for Hamilton. Hamilton, good composure, just sidesteps his man and tries to slip Rago in behind the fullback there, but good defending from San Antonio will be an FC Edmonton throw-in, which is taken quickly to Craig. Craig turns nicely and plays back for Cooey. Cooey, early cross, looking for Pinto. Pinto gets his head on the ball, but it just goes wide. Nice early cross there from Chris Cooey there. Almost caught them by surprise. Yeah, Pinto gives him the thumbs up to let him know that was a pretty pretty good delivery there. Uh, well defended, though, there by Fabian Kling, though. Uh, didn't give Pinto much of an angle to try to get that ball back towards goal. Uh, you know, Kling was was ball side, goal side, so Pinto did have to, to kind of go around the defender to try to get that towards goal. 
Played almost a quarter of an hour. And it is FC Edmonton nil, San Antonio nil. Rago trying to play that one away from the danger zone. Hachi gets his head to it, and Sean Seiko gets his chest on that one, and he's just bundled over in the midfield area. It's going to be a free kick for FC Edmonton, which Hachi takes first time and drives it low to the right-hand side. It's a bit of a waste. He can't find Craig, but Pinto has won it back. He's also lost his footing, and it's brought away by Soto, who's tackled by Seiko. A little bit of a scrappy period, but Seiko slows it down with a pass to Craig. Craig onto his favored left foot, now wide to the right, and Rago. Antonio Rago back into the midfield, and Kui plays a chip shot to the edge of the penalty area. A little chip pass, it's headed away and dealt with easily by San Antonio. Still goalless as the visiting team make a break from left to right, all in white shirts today. And FC Edmonton all in black. Live on the Team 1260 today at cbc.ca where all the games are streamed live this season from Clark Stadium. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor. FC Edmonton nil and San Antonio nil so far. It's San Antonio in possession and they'll play it all the way back to their goalkeeper. Janicki does that and it's cleared by the keeper towards Soto who plays it out to the left hand side. It's going to be Jonathan Greenfield who got on the score sheet in the game against FC Edmonton for San Antonio in Texas last week. San Antonio bringing it forward uh, with a little bit more purpose this time, but again having to backtrack under good pressure in the midfield from FC Edmonton. It's the red-headed gold who plays the ball back into the defense. And San Antonio spraying a ball out to the left-hand side, which Lassonde makes a good header on in the left back position for FC Edmonton and Edmonton have possession back momentarily once again lose it right on halfway for San Antonio attacking the goal to our right Chris Cooey the captain back in the lineup today and winning a free kick which Hachi takes quickly and Van Leerdam helps the ball along to the left hand side and Seiko Seiko 30 yards from goal puts in a left footed cross that's cleared well by San Antonio into their midfield and Nunez Nunez looking for some support he's tackled by Lassonde who did a great little challenge there throwing himself at the ball on that occasion but again San Antonio battling for it well and we're seeing a very evenly matched uh, two teams so far in the first 17 oh, minutes my. and it remains goalless unforced errors by both teams and one could create a chance for Pinto there but that's dealt with in the end by San Antonio will play this out to the left hand side this time Soto bringing it forward crossing the halfway mark out to the wing then makes the overlapping run but it's a darting infield run by San Antonio they've got a man over on the right hand side and it's a very strong tackle by Van Leerdam who thought that he should have had a free kick but it's back with goal for San Antonio he's going to try and cut through the middle Takes a little touch and then gets support from Soto. Out to the right-hand side and Fabian Kling. Infield for Gold. Kling again, playing a 1-2. And ball up to the edge of the area that Hamilton heads away. And FC Edmonton in possession with Rago. 18 minutes gone, nil-nil. It's Hamilton just on the edge of his own penalty area. And now Hatchy. Pretty good atmosphere in the stadium today, Steve. Yeah, good, good atmosphere. Tactically, I have to say, I haven't seen anything quite like the way San Antonio is playing right now. There, there are five players who refuse to come over the half line. And, uh, and, and every time, even when they have the attack in Edmonton's zone, there's uh, a large group of players that don't come over the line. And uh, really, there's three attacking players. Maybe a couple of midfielders come out to help out, but they get no support from the back. There's like there's a huge gap there, and San Antonio is really just saying, daring Edmonton, saying, "We dare you to try to score on us because we're just lining up white bodies in the back." This looks good for FC Edmonton. Seiko, left hand side, has Lassonde overlapping. He just waited too long, and in the end, loses out. It'll be a throw-in for San Antonio. Nil-nil so far, chances at both ends, but no goals with 19 minutes played. The 
referee actually signaling for a foul throw there against the San Antonio fullback and she's signaling that he had one of his legs not on the ground which of course you have to do by the rules but that's not something you see very often. No, a lot of times you, it's, it's sort of like traveling in basketball. Players do it but it's very rarely ever called. So it's uh, it's something to see when a, when, a, when a official actually calls a foul throw. FC Edmonton not making the most of uh, winning that throw in back and just handing over possession to San Antonio with Craig winning it back though on the right hand side. Craig slipping the ball back to Hamilton. Hamilton takes a touch and drills it forward to the left hand side but he's given possession away to Purcell and we are seeing some uh, unforced errors from both teams in the early stages of this match. I think part of the enforced errors that you're seeing too is just how, how clogged up this middle of the park can be when San Antonio, as I said, they don't have a lot of willingness to go forward and they're just happy to clog up that middle. And, and, and Edmonton's not getting the ball wide enough. They're, they're not exploiting the outside. So when you just have so many bodies in the middle, the ball's gonna pin ball around no matter how much you try to thread the ball through. Uh, Edmonton's gotta start spreading this ball around on the ground and try to get around this just whole swath of white bodies uh, really in between the football hash marks and uh, and really hanging back. Left hand side for FC Edmonton, the song getting to the halfway line and trying to play a ball up towards Pinto. Deflected out for a throw in right beneath us here in the commentary position. He finds Van Leerdam back to Lassonde again. Lassonde in field to Lamb. Gorgeous little turn by Matt Lamb. Just couldn't get on the end of it, but wonderful little bit of skill there. And we've seen some really nice touches like that from him so far this season. Edmonton might have another chance here from the right hand side. It's Craig running at his defender. Craig gets to the corner of the box and plays it back for Rago who will put in the early cross it's low but it, the rebound picked up by Cooey Cooey gets it caught up in his feet a bit but finds Seiko will try the first time shot that's deflected Van Leerdam shoots to the second attempt got it on target the goalkeeper came across and made the save and gathered it well that's really all the space Evans has got right now is to try those shots from distance and uh, when they're like that, Joe Sattler's gonna handle them, but they've gotta try them. I mean, I don't think Van Leerdam made a bad decision there. I mean, that's really what, what's there. They've gotta take the chances that are, that are being offered to them. Uh, right now, uh, the, uh, inside the box, it's just, just no route through for Edmonton right now. Lasson from the left-hand side, 40 oh, yards okay. from goal, plays it to the far post. Craig heading it back across the face of goal. It was a good idea. Now the rebound yeah, comes I to him, he tries the volley, but that one is cleared away by San Antonio. Still nil-nil. Cooey playing it forward. Seiko slipping it to Pinto. Looks for the chip shot from the edge of the penalty area. On his weaker side, the right foot. And in truth, never really threatening there over the top. No, and again, you think when you see that ball go off Seiko's foot, you think that maybe he's going to slip Pinto through. But there were actually four defenders already back in the line playing in front of Yashir Pinto when he takes this ball. They play in that line very, very deep, defending very deep. Uh, the, the exact opposite of a high line. They're uh, they're willing to to play people on side as long as they, they 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 stay compact in front of their goalkeeper. And uh, really, I can't blame San Antonio for this for this approach. I mean, they are resting a lot of players today again for that U.S. Open Cup match on Tuesday. A lot of their best players are sitting, and they're doing what they have to do when you when you're starting a lot of players who might be on your reserve squad. Is is that you're, they're 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 playing defense first soccer, and this is what we're seeing today. And it's going to take some work for Edmonton to break this down. Steve Sandor and Gareth Hampshire live from Clark Stadium today. FC Edmonton against San Antonio. We're live on the Team 1260 and on cbc.ca live streaming the game this afternoon. 23 minutes gone, nil-nil so far. Free kick for San Antonio though, right? On the center spot virtually and played to the left-hand side. Try and get a break going down the outside there, but Lamb shepherding his man well and will win a throw in or in fact the throw has been given against him to San Antonio must have taken a deflection there and it's on the left hand side for the Scorpions gathered nicely and back to Soto in the middle of the midfield San Antonio keeping that passing movement going on the left hand side it's now deep inside their own half it's with gold in the middle of the pitch See Edmonton trying to get in amongst it and Hatchie in the end making an interception and Hamilton will play it back for Lance Parker who puts his foot on the ball and pushes it out to Hamilton again. Hamilton finds Hatchie, Hatchie on his left foot back to Paul Hamilton. 
Hamilton looks for that switch ball to the left-hand side. Again, it doesn't quite have the legs, but Lasson picks up the downward header, plays it out to the wing and Seiko. Seiko trying for a cute pass back to him. It's deflected out for a throw-in for FC Edmonton. Good situation, though. Seiko taking it quickly, finding Lasson. Lasson taking it to the goal line, looking to try and win a corner kick. But in fact, it goes out for a goal kick. And it's still nil-nil, 25 minutes gone. Yeah, there was good help there. Kling and the, Kling, the right back, also got some help there from uh, from one of the one of the forwards coming back, Ramirez, who uh, was in the incident last week that broke uh, Fabian Forbes' nose. But uh, you know, good work by Ramirez to come back and basically double team Lasson and give him no room to try to get across in. Sattler's goal kick gets up to halfway. It looks like the wind might be a little bit stronger than you think. That ball that was in the air was being held up by the breeze. Free kick given though, which Van Leerdam takes quickly and finds Seiko. Seiko to the left-hand side and Lassonde. We've seen a lot of him on the left flank in the early stages. Back to Sean Seiko. He's about 40 yards from goal. Chips in a far post cross. Craig's up there. Craig with the header and Craig is offside. Beautifully finished, but the flag was up. That must have been a hairline decision and it remains nil-nil. We'll have another look at this, uh, but you know you have to give the officials the benefit of the doubt when there are football lines on the stadium. Uh, they they get an extra helping hand on where the lines are and where the players are. We'll see where uh, Craig is standing when this cross is delivered. But uh, here it is, just a just a great little cross coming from from Seiko. That's tight. It's hard to say it if if uh, the defender's running with Craig at the time, but uh, from this angle, you really can't tell. So you have to give the referee the benef benefit of the doubt in that situation. Well, a very nice headed finish by Paul Craig. He hit the back of the net, but the flag was up instantly, and it's ruled out for offside. It remains nil-nil, and it's Seiko again. It's a beautiful cross by Sean Seiko. Now Lasson, right-footed, finds Craig again on the right-hand side. He's been finding a bit of space on that flank. Rago plays a deep ball into the box, and it's very well claimed by Sattler, up in the air, over the head of Yeshia Pinto. But, you know, that's a little bit surprising, too, that uh, Edmonton was able to find some success throwing a ball in the air uh, against San Antonio in that situation. Because, again, that is a, a decision that's very tight. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, for San Antonio to get beaten in the air is, uh, when you look at the height advantage that they have in the back over Edmonton, uh, that's not something maybe you'd expect when you see look at that back four. Nil-nil FC Edmonton and San Antonio. We're live on cbc.ca streaming the game live and the team 1260 local radio in edmonton i'm gareth hampshire alongside steve sandor and it's goalless that's the closest we've come but craig's header ruled out for offside and it is nil nil in edmonton other thing to watch i noticed in the last couple of minutes matt lamb has been limping a little bit uh matt, matt was uh, was was questionable if he was going to start or not because he did hurt his hip too in uh, last week's game against San Antonio. Uh, but uh, he looks like he's running fine right now in the last couple of minutes, but uh, a couple of minutes ago he was favoring and was down on one knee for a little bit. So we'll see uh, see how he's doing. And there he is, another nice touch from him on the right-hand side, playing that ball back to Craig, but it's in the end one back by San Antonio. And defending the goal to our left, they bring the ball up the left-hand side. Hamilton sneaks in, wins possession back. Right flank, it's Lamb just holding that ball in from the touchline and finding Rago who breaks past the halfway mark, plays it up to the feet of Pinto. Van Leerdam dispossessed in the middle of the midfield and a ball going over the top of the FC Edmonton defense and Bayona is going to chase that one right down by the touchline for San Antonio. Looking to work in the cross from that left wing, but Cooey winning the ball back with a good challenge and finding Seiko instantly. Seiko crosses halfway, he's going to wait for a bit of support because he's a little stranded. Back to Cooey on the right-hand side, the Edmonton captain. Cooey puts in the deep cross first time, but that's going to be too close to Sattler, the goalkeeper for San Antonio, and that's a routine claim for him. Yeah, on the other way up the field too, and Bayona had that break going up the left side. I think he had one look over his shoulder and saw he had absolutely no help. He had three guys trailing, but they were far behind him there. And again, it's a sign of just how deep San Antonio is playing, that when they have that break, Bayona was basically by himself, and he had to wait and really had no options, even though he'd won that ball down the left side. And I think that Edmonton realized that with him running away from goal on the left side, he was there really weren't any trouble. 
Wes Knight has come in for Ewan Purcell for San Antonio. That's an early change after about half an hour. And we're goalless at Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton playing the ball up towards Pinto again. And that's going to be cleared by the Scorpions defense. It'll be a throw in for Edmonton. We would have to assume that there's some problem with Purcell. Uh, Knight would be one of those players who would have been rested, so I'm sure that's not uh, the plan that uh, Coach Tim Hankinson wanted with uh, San Antonio to be playing Knight so early in the game. But again, West Knight, former Vancouver Whitecap. Seiko breaks in from the left hand side, beating his man beautifully, but the shot just uh, screwing it, or slicing it rather, wide to the right hand side. It's gone all the way out for a throw in to San Antonio. Still nil nil. said if uh, if coach Tim Hankinson wanted he could actually playing a lineup that has four former Whitecaps and one former Toronto FC player on this on on in, in his 11 at one time so that would be sort of interesting to see that you'd have five players in that starting line we were playing in Canada last year Craig on the right hand side trying to get a cross in with his left foot Cooey wins the deflected ball back Rago playing it back for Craig. Craig looking to beat his man. He's done it nicely. Good pace to the byline. Gets over a good cross as well. Headed away by Gold. There's the shot by Lamb. They're appealing for a handball in there. Nothing's been given by the official. It's won back by Matt Lamb on the edge of the penalty area. Just got away from him there when he was about to pull the trigger or make a killer pass. San Antonio win themselves a throw in on the left hand side. I don't know if that you could, uh, if you're a referee, if you could give a handball there. I mean, there was two players, uh, San Antonio and an Edmonton player, who were right next to each other, and I don't think either of them knew much about that ball as it was coming in from just a couple of yards away. Remember, you have to play your, it, the ball can't play the hand, the hand's got to play the ball. That's that's the letter of the law there, and uh, I can't can't imagine that someone would be consciously giving a hand the ball in that situation. 31 minutes of action already in the books in this first half the North American Soccer League. Cross uh, going to be easily claimed by Lance Parker there, whose team are nil-nil at home against San Antonio. Sean Seiko has the ball from Parker's overarm throw. Seiko just checks his run and then chips a lovely ball over the top for Pinto. He read it well and it had beaten the defense, but just a little bit too much pace on it, and it's picked up by the keeper. At the other end, nice ball over the top by Gold, that's uh, taken beautifully in his stride by Bayona and Hamilton just doing enough to get that one back to Parker. Yeah, it was a one-on-one -on -one battle there and that's really how San Antonio is going to score right now if that's the way it's going forward because Bayona looks like he's the lone man up front. Really, this is, uh, if you're looking at the formation, it's a 4-5-1, maybe sometimes a 5-4-1 that San Antonio is using. Uh, not, not a lot of people up front and that was uh, a chance just punting up the field and turning into a one-on-one -on -one battle but I think Hamilton did well to, to stay even with Bayona uh, and really that's how the, the first goal was created against Edmonton last week where a penalty was called when Campos went in a similar situation. Lassonde with a cross in from the left hand side to the far post, the goalkeeper Sattler claiming that nicely again and it remains nil-nil at Clark Stadium. Chances really at a premium so far, for, as far as clear-cut chances go, Steve. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure San Antonio is pretty happy with uh, the way they've defended. They've been very compact, very tough to break down, uh, really being very, very happy. And it, it, it almost seems that at, at points where you think that they're just very happy to get out of here with one point, uh, take uh, resting the players they are. They've had a great start to the season. One point's a good result for them. Uh, they uh, won't hurt their league position at all. And, you, you really get that feeling that there's not a lot of offensive thrust here. They're just happy to, to keep Edmonton at bay right now. Tell me two minutes before. Jonathan Greenfield in possession for San Antonio. Just checks and turns on the left-hand side and plays the ball forward to Gold. Gold trying to thread it in behind Paul Hamilton. And the flag is up, in fact, for a FC Edmonton free kick on the right-hand side. Rago is going to take it. And he'll play the ball back to Lance Parker. There's the challenge between Hamilton. And the forward look really six or one and half a dozen of the other. But Edmonton get the decision and is back with Hamilton now. And he plays the ball into the midfield and Lamb. Outside of his foot, ball to the left flank and Lassonde. Lamb's got those nice touches that you see now and again. 
Seiko just moving the ball in field for Van Leerdam. Van Leerdam in the middle of the field, wide to the right, and Rago lands. Taking a position up on the left wing where he's got lots of room if they could just find him. At the moment, though, they're probing down that right-hand side with Craig. Craig's crossing is cleared away towards Seiko, who tries his luck from 30 yards, and it wasn't that far away, as you could hear the gaps of the crowd, just wide of the post. Yeah, and I think we mentioned that at the top of the show, that, that Sean can shoot from anywhere within that 30-yard, 35-yard window. Anywhere is within shooting range for him. He's one of the best shooters at NASL. Uh, you'd rate him as one of the top five guys with, with his right foot. So anytime he has a chance, teeing it up is not a bad situation for him. Yeah, by the San Antonio goalkeeper, Lassonde wins that header in the air, but Gold playing it forward. It drops in the middle of the field again. And Rago in a strong challenge. He gets straight up, though he's fine. And Cooey plays it back to Hamilton. Still nil-nil at Clark oh. Stadium, 10 minutes to half time. FC Edmonton trying to find a way through this uh, very disciplined San Antonio team that's uh, set its stall out well and is nil-nil with the home team at the moment. Cooey the captain, bringing the ball past halfway, wide to the left, and Sean Seiko. Seiko just cuts inside and plays it into the middle of the park, and Lamb. Lamb takes a touch, he's dispossessed this time, getting a little bit closer to him, but Seiko wins it back and gets the ball back from Lasson. Van Leerdams in quite a bit of space, 30 yards from goal, he's going to try a strike, and it warms the hands of the goalkeeper, but he manages to parry it and then gather it at the second attempt. His throw out to Paul one though, Rago wins it back, and it's going to be Van Leerdam again, who probably came the closest there with that long-range effort, wasn't a bad strike, he got hold of that. No, and I, and I keep saying this is what Edmonton's got to do, because right now with, with, with all the space being closed down the box, with so many San Antonio players defending deep, They've got to try those shots and maybe make San Antonio to respect that a little bit to say, you know, that we're giving him a little bit too much of a shooting gallery on the outside by, by defending so deeply and maybe forcing at least a, a midfielder or someone to come up and try to block that shot and create a little bit of space behind. This can actually have an effect on the road. Great ball in by Seiko this time, and there's the header by Pinto. Just glances it into the far corner. The goal's been coming, and it's come. Sean Seiko, again, a pinpoint cross. Pinto just got the blind side of the defender and glances in a header. A deft little touch from the Chilean, and FC Edmonton have the lead. It's 1-0. Uh, this is, uh, we, we saw what we thought was an inch-perfect cross to Paul Craig a few minutes ago, and now this is just another perfect cross to Pinto. And it's just a glancing header. This, this is just a little brush off the forehead, but just enough to, 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 to take this inside the post, and, and really Daryl Sadler had no chance there whatsoever. And, and again, we you know we talked about what Sean Seiko can do. We've seen him shooting, we've seen the crossing, and again, you couldn't, if, you couldn't walk that ball out and place it on Pinto's head any better than he delivered with his foot there. Uh, just a just fantastic bit of combination play between the two between the two players, and Pinto scores off of a, a great play by, by Seiko. So the two, two of the star players come to the fore for Edmonton. Yeah, Seiko could probably open a can of beans with his right foot. That was a beautiful delivery and a nice little finish by Pinto. That'll do his confidence, the world of good, and the home crowd likes it. And it's a good atmosphere at Clark Stadium with probably about eight minutes now to half time. A good time to score for FC Edmonton. And it's Hatchy now bringing the ball over the halfway mark. They're looking for another, attacking from right to left. Craig. Right down by that right-hand corner flag. And he will win a throw-in on the far side of the field. And this is another good situation for FC Edmonton. And this game really needed a goal. It needed a goal because now San Antonio's got to probably go into the room at halftime and start thinking, they got to change it up a little bit. Maybe Tim Hankins is going to be under some pressure. Maybe to put Campos on, give, give him a few minutes out there. And they know they have the game in 48 hours. But now that Edmonton's got the lead, you can't gamble for the, for the, for the, for the clean sheet. Uh, that's out the window. So we'll see where the strategy lies for San Antonio and how they change things up. They'll probably stick with this until halftime with what they've been doing. And then at halftime, reassess and see what they can do. San Antonio a little bit rattled at the moment. They've conceded another corner. That's Pinto's first goal the NASL action. Did score, did score against the Whitecaps. 
in the uh, in the Canadian champ Championship. An another another uh, ball that he won in the box off a great cross. So uh, Pinto's now his second goal uh, overall, first in NASL, and uh, you know a guy who's on loan from Colo Colo in Chile, and a lot is expected out of him. You know, really, if you talk about designated players, if he's as close to a designated player as you would have in NASL. Corner from the left wing. Seiko just waiting on the official to sort things out. A lot of players bunched up right on the penalty spot there. As Seiko delivers deep to the far post. Pinto peeling off his man. The linesman spotted an infringement in there. The flag's up and the whistle's gone. Free kick to San Antonio. Well, in truth, the goal had been coming. And prior to that, Seiko had picked out Gray, who'd found the net but was offside so there, there have been that threat yeah well that's the trouble when you defend as deep as, as, as San Antonio is is that you don't the other team starts losing respect for how you can come back and attack them and they start pulling men forward pulling men forward pulling men forward and, and, and realizing that there's not much you can even offer on the counter because you're only having that one striker sitting there by himself so that they, they that Edmondson can bring men forward and realize they're probably not going to get punished for it so Sooner or later, the numbers game will, 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 will come and catch up to you when you're not threatening the other way. I mean, really, other than maybe a couple of goal kicks, Lance Barker, he, he, he could have gone behind the net there and grabbed a hot dog for himself because he hasn't had much to do at all. That's Parker. As we mentioned, FC Edmonton's fourth starting goalkeeper this season. And good to see him back after that awful broken arm injury. And so far... He'll be liking the way this is going. His team with a 1-0 lead, five minutes to half-time, and trying to attack again down the right-hand side. Pinto beaten to this ball, and it'll be an FC Edmonton throw-in. I mean, you see that so many times in, in, in games in Europe where you'll see some a, a team play an extremely defensive style and bunker down. Uh, that, that, that you're just inviting that other team to come more and more at you and bring more people forward, and those holding midfielders become attacking midfielders. Whistle for an offside against Matt Lamb. he have made a broke through the middle. Got on the end of a lob ball over the top, but had mistimed his run slightly. 1-0 FC Edmonton lead, but a free kick to San Antonio. Played to the left-hand side, not a very good one. That ball going straight into touch. And will be a throw-in for FC Edmonton. Matt Lamb there. He's got a he's got a he's got a more marked up passport at, at his age of like 2021 20, than most people would have in, in their in their senior years. He's played in the Netherlands, he's played in England, he's played in Croatia, he's played in Japan. Uh, you know, he's a player for so young has had a lot of professional experience and it shows in his play. His, his touch is, is, is exceptional. Chris Cooey going up to win a header there, and Lamb will get on the end of it. Lamb just losing out on this occasion, and it's Soto in the middle, but Pinto takes it back off his toes. Interchanges a pass with Lamb, and it's now Lasson and Hatchie. Hatchie finding Hamilton still deep inside his own half. FC Edmonton defending the goal to our right. Hamilton to the center spot, and the number 11, Matt Lamb. Lamb right to the flank, and Lasson. Lasson has Pinto outside of him but plays it back into Lamb and Lamb picks out Hamilton. Home crowd trying to get FC Edmonton going for one last burst just before half time. Seiko switches it to the right wing and Craig. Craig right on the edge of the penalty box finds Seiko again in field to Lamb. Lamb looking for maybe a one-two with Van Leerdam. Lamb's gone down under the challenge. Referee playing the advantage and it's with Craig. Craig from the right hand side it's not made the most of that advantage though he's given the ball away an unforced error losing possession and a throw into san antonio edmonton though is starting to find some space there and uh, i think they're realizing in front of that back line that, that there is just a little bit of space there near the top of the box they can exploit and maybe pass laterally a little bit and again too they know they can go back because uh, san antonio has few so few players up front or up up, up top they can, it's always an option there's no pressure on them bringing the ball back and resetting back to the fullbacks into the last minute and a half of the first half and it's fc edmonton with a one nil lead against san antonio hamilton a little flick header back to lance parker and parker will pick that one up and he'll throw overarm to the right hand side and find rago rago 
takes a couple of touches and then drills this one to the left wing. Hatchy, Hatchy into Van Leerdam. And now Lasson, Lasson playing this ball back for Hatchy. And there when Hatchy had the ball, there was no San Antonio player within 30 yards of him. So that just shows you how deeply they're defending that, uh, that uh, the, the, the one striker they have chasing is it's a, kind of a lost cause for him right now. He's doing it to uh, to get some work in, but there's really no threat in those fullbacks. They've got all, all day in the, in the center half of the fullbacks to, to get that ball out. The song grafting away down the left-hand side, beaten to the ball by the right fullback in San Antonio, trying to scramble it clear. Pressure on from FC Edmonton here, though, and Cooey's got the ball back. Cooey getting his shirt tugged, but finds Hamilton. Hamilton will pick up Rago. Rago in a central position just on the halfway mark plays the ball to the feet of matt lamb who holds it up very nicely cooey now to the left hand side and lasson back for hatchy hatchy on his left foot switching play to the right hand side rago feeling like he should have had a handball there and the referee has spotted it it will be a free kick for fc everton one nil they lead and time being added on now for the first half yeah i'm pretty sure san antonio will be happy just to get it at 1-0 now and as I said before I think that's where they'll have a talk about possibly resetting and seeing how they can put some more pressure on the Edmonton goal I, I think their best chance came right about at the first minute of the game uh, when Purcell crossed that ball and that just went over the bar but since then there's been nothing in terms of a scoring chance created by San Antonio and there hasn't been a shot on goal I don't believe that Lance Parker's had to make a save and uh, they need to correct that situation they need to put a little more pressure on Edmonton in the second half or else uh, uh, you know, that's already will already have enough goals to win this game. So uh, this is a, a change that I think we'll see from San Antonio in the second half. Gold playing a chip shot over the top of Paul Hamilton's head as San Antonio to break down the left-hand side now. Close to the corner flag, the cross coming up to the far post. That's really dangerous. A good defensive header from FC Edmonton to snuff out that last San Antonio attack. And at halftime, FC Edmonton lead one goal to nil thanks to the header from Pinto. Yeah, and I think in that situation, that last that last uh, header, we saw San Antonio be dangerous. They actually brought three men into the box. I think they realized they were right near the halftime whistle. This would be the last attack of the game. So they could commit men forward. And when they commit men forward, they're dangerous. And we'll have to see if there's going to be more of that in the second half because they certainly didn't commit many men forward in that first half. And we're just inviting Edmonton to come at them, come at them, come at them. And they finally got burned. 37 minutes before the goal came, but when it came, Again, terrific cross from Sean Seiko. Yeah, and you know, we've seen a lot of that from him. And there was, uh, again, the one to Craig that was just offside. But but that's what, what Sean can do. And, and, and the, the pinpoint accuracy of his passing, of his crossing, and his shooting is just something to behold. And this is, again, a player who's an NASL All-Star. And, and in this situation, he shows it, shows why he's a class above like so many other players in this league. And, and really a player that, that, that you really see in the future moving on to bigger and better things in his career. We're live from Clark Stadium, cbc.ca, and the team 1260, where FC Edmonton have a 1 0 lead at half time against the San Antonio Scorpions. And we're going to join the San Antonio coach, Tim Henkinson, right now, who's going to join us from pitch side here at Clark Stadium. Tim, uh, thank you for joining us. Yep. Uh, just give us your reaction to the first half. Well, our possession is very poor. Uh, I don't think we're playing physically through the midfield. We're just uh, letting letting them bump us off the ball too easily, and uh, therefore we're always on our heels defending. And if you do that, then the number of uh, opportunities to play balls in your box, even though initially they don't seem dangerous, you know, goals happen like that one happened. So we've got to get our possession going, get a more physical game going, and start to present ourselves going the other way to try and equalize. It's an honest assessment, Tim. What will your message be to the players at halftime then? Well, I have to play tough. I mean, they're, they're just, uh, you know, midfield is soft. Uh, I'm very disappointed in uh, particularly a couple of the players. And, you know, uh, this, this is their opportunity. A lot of these guys are not starters for us. You know, we're resting some players for the U.S. Open Cup. And uh, this was their chance. They come out and train every day, and they're always begging for their opportunity. They get it, and they're not taking advantage of it. So uh, if they want future playing time, they better play a better second half. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.
Thank you. That's Tim Henkinson, the uh, coach of the San Antonio Scorpions, joining us from pitch side and uh, clearly not happy with the way his team's played in that first 45 minutes. I think Harry Sinkgraven probably quite a bit happier, and we're going to hear from him in just a moment, the FC Edmonton coach. Of course, uh, a couple of changes for him uh, this afternoon, and Yashia Pinto getting on the score sheet for his team. Before that, though, Paul Craig uh, did have the ball in the net. That was ruled out for offside. Let's uh, talk to Harry. Harry, thank you for your time down there. Tell us about your reaction to that first half. Well, our idea was to uh, put a lot of pressure on them. And uh, from there, if you win the ball, ball to the side, crosses. And from there, uh, of course, try to score a goal and fight for the second ball and, and, and try to shoot on goal. And uh, if you look uh, to the game, then uh, by, by moment we do pretty well. Uh, nice goal from across, uh, one uh, offside goal. I don't know if it was offside, but okay. Um, and, and a couple of shots. So, uh, yeah, we're doing good. And, uh, I mean, we just talked to their coach, who's very disappointed in the way his team's played. G given that they'll probably come out fighting in the second half, what will your message be to your players at halftime, Harry? Well, the message is continue what we do uh, till now. Uh, and by moments, what, uh, what we can improve is if you put pressure on uh, with our strikers, then our defenders have to step up a little bit more to make the, the spaces small. Uh, that's something what we uh, will mention in the halftime. But, uh, yeah, we have to prepare on... Uh, Another team, second half, the wind is, uh, is also different, so uh, yeah, the, the, the guys will be prepared. Thank you, Harry. Uh, that's Harry St. Graven, the FC Edmonton coach, pleased with the first 45 minutes for his team. They lead FC Edmonton at half time against San Antonio. The second half is coming up next. Hunger is our planet's greatest solvable problem. Around the world, people everywhere are affected by hunger. Let's make a difference. Join us and help stop hunger. Text WFP Hunger to 45678 to donate $5 to the World Food Program. Half-time at Clark Stadium in the North American Soccer League. FC Edmonton won, San Antonio nil. And the lone goal from Yeshia Pinto in that first half. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. Here's that first chance, and again, this is a good save because Seiko, I mean, Seiko takes the free kick and Pinto runs in front, but uh, that ball doesn't deflect, and the keeper's almost got to play it both ways if it comes in straight or if it deflects. A couple of chances by Van Leerdam in that first half. That was uh, one of the shots that went over the top. Another cross from that left-hand side, and Seiko putting it over the crossbar. But similar in both ways, that you have the one player knocking it down, bringing it down, and then taking the shot outside. That's the one that was ruled out for offside. It looked very, very close. Yeah, it probably would have been a step or two, but again, you give the officials the benefit of the doubt because of those football lines. Hard to tell from our angle. Pinto's goal, beautiful cross from Seiko, and a really nicely timed run. Yeah, and you know, he knows here that all he has to do is get a little touch. 
he, he's, it's almost like he's being interfered with if the foot comes up high and it's, it's like it surprises him coming down, but he gets enough of that, and that's just being in the right position and knowing that to stay with it, to keep, keep your run going, and it just glances off the head and works out perfectly. You don't have to power it in sometimes, just follow about placement. Yashia Pinto's goal, the difference between the two teams in the first half. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor, FC Edmonton, leading by one goal to nil. And the second half is coming up next. <laughs> Ya lo hace, pierna derecha, directo al arco, golazo, Hunger is our planet's greatest solvable problem. Around the world, people everywhere are affected by hunger. Let's make a difference. Join us and help stop hunger. Text WFP Hunger to 45678 to donate $5 to the World Food Program. This is your NESL Weekly Rewind for Week 7. Let's start midweek action by Mon Soccer Complex. Let's hear from David Foley. There's definitely something special there this year. We're um, very close on and off the field. We we'll work you know, our backsides off for each other. And we have a very passionate manager. So, you know, that can only be an infectious thing for the team. Puerto Rico really showing that team effort here early in the second half. Penalty kick saved by Joe Nasco. Foley follows his miss with a goal. Foley staying with the play there. Nasco did well on the initial save, almost got to the putback. 1-0 Puerto Rico at this point, but Atlanta would get a chance just minutes later. Ronaldo Navia, the reigning NESL Player of the Month, just misses wide. Gets a good foot on the ball there, can't believe that goes just wide. 77th minute, Hector Ramos. Nice finish, second goal in two games for the Puerto Rican International. Downers up 2-0 at this point, and then in the 84th minute, here come the Islanders, Golasco, Golasco, Goal! El Twino Party, El Twino Everything, Golea, Entertainment, Goals, and Celebration here in Bayamon City. The Islanders completely dominated this one, 15 to 5 in total shots. The Islanders would travel to North Carolina for a weekend Saturday clash with the Carolina Railhawks. Jonathan Fania, first half action, draws a foul here, free kick in an advantageous position. David Foley takes the free kick. Jay Needham back post, heads it back on to Fania. Wonderful finish by Fania, great job by Needham. Nasco getting to the air, almost comes up with it. Foley continuing to be a maestro on set pieces. Jay Needham, great job there, just laying it in the path of Fania. Fania with his third goal of the season, and get that dirt off your shoulder. Just outside the 18, back in, still in. Sends it across, bounces off of Zimmerman. Can he keep it alive? He does, pops it back. Schreiber can volley. Schreiber! How about the Carolina Railhawks? 1 1. The Railhawks look to push their lead. Nick Zimmerman, spectacular effort from outside the area, but it was deemed offsides. The Railhawks had most of the chances, great opportunities, but they split the points with the Islanders. On to Fort Lauderdale, Lockhart Stadium we go. A rematch of last year's NASL Championship Series between the Fort Lauderdale Strikers and the Minnesota Stars. First half action, Abe Thompson nicely crossed for Mark Anderson. That's his second goal of the season. 
Strikers lead 1-0, but right before halftime, bad giveaway into the path of Amani Walker. He finishes coolly. The third goal in the season for Walker slots it past Glazer. It's 1-1 at halftime. Into the middle, and Amani Walker lurking there, puts back, and that's another goal for Minnesota, their second of the match. 2-1 Minnesota at this point, and the Stars look to be extending their winning streak. Amani Walker puts a nice ball into the path of Simone Broccolello, who finishes it off. 3-1, the Stars win. They take the full three points, third straight win for Minnesota. You see they had the vast majority of chances in this one. To Atlanta we go, Tampa Bay facing the Silverbacks. Sends it back out to Ambersley who will regroup, Shane Hill. Tries to center, sends it into the box and a deflection into the net in the 12th minute. And it's a goal for Daniel Antonio. Antonio wasn't done on the day. He'd be rewarded for his efforts as an NESL Player of the Week after this goal. One times it, again, past Ilias, Silverback's back line nowhere to be found on that. Lots of space, lots of time, and Antonio makes no mistake of that, about that. Two nothing at halftime. But in the second half... I'll see if he puts some air underneath it or line shot. Fairly line shot, headed out of there. But picked back up again, Ball. into the box, header goal! Great job by Shea Maroney right there. Raphael Cox gets it back, slides it in, finds Shea Maroney who makes no bones about it, puts it top shelf up a right corner. Silverbacks appear to be back in this one, but then watch this move by Mike Ambersley. 360 move, beautiful goal from a tight angle, play of the week nominee, no doubt. Fakes out the Atlanta defender, gets Ilias going the wrong way, puts it past him. It's 3-1 to at this point. Kieran O'Brien with a nice corner, which Maroney would finish for a second of the game. It was too little too late for Atlanta, though. They remain winless on the season. 3-2 defeat at home in front of a sellout crowd to the Rowdies, who snap a two-game losing streak. Welcome back to Clark Stadium for the second half. FC Edmonton against San Antonio. A 1-0 lead, the Pinto goal, the difference between the two teams as they start to come out back onto the pitch. I'm Gareth Hampshire alongside Steve Sandor in this second half. Well, we know from what we heard from the San Antonio coach, it's going to be, a, or you would expect it to be, a different team this half. He certainly wasn't very pleased. Yeah, I can imagine there might have been some, uh, some not-so-kind words said in the dressing room, judging from what he was saying to us. And, and again, I think in the first half, I was talking tactically about what San Antonio was doing. And now I'm starting to think with uh, what uh, what Coach Hankinson was saying is maybe this wasn't the tactics he meant. It's just how it sort of ended up being on the field with them having no thrust forward because uh, it looked like he was pretty unhappy by the way that his midfield was holding back and was allowing Edmonton to have all that space. So it doesn't sound like it was something he drew up on the chalkboard or the whiteboard for his San Antonio Scorpions. It was just the, end of, the way they ended up playing that it looked at times like a 4-5-1 or even at times like a 4-6-0 if you wanted to, to map out the formation. Now, Tim Hankinson did allude to that U.S. Open Cup match that some players were being rested, and this was the opportunity <laughs> for some other players today, and he was a bit surprised they hadn't stamped their authority on this match. So we'll see what they do in the second half. San Antonio attacking from right to left, and they will get us underway in this second half. The referee's blown the whistle, and the players wait another two or three seconds before kicking off, but have got it underway now, and the ball in the San Antonio defense on the right-hand side for Gold, who looks like he's dropped to fullback at the moment. San Antonio in white today, white, all white, their colors, and FC Edmonton in the traditional home strip of black with uh, blue trim. Already a change I see, there's that, uh, with, uh, uh, that there isn't just one person up front there for San Antonio now. When they were trying, when Gold was trying to play that ball in the back, they actually had three or four players already starting start to move across across the half the halfway line and moving into the the Edmonton end of the field. They are trying to looks like they are trying to, to uh, bring more people forward, which is what they're going to have to do, being down a goal. But it looks like they are going to try maybe to push back a little bit where they didn't really create a lot of offensive thrust in the first half. And I'm sure maybe that was uh, the the first order of business in Tim Hankinson's uh, halftime talk with his team. Yashir Pinto's goal separating the teams as FC Edmonton play a free kick from left to right, headed away by San Antonio. Hamilton cleaning up that menacing attack and playing the ball forward towards Lamb, who's 
bundled over and loses out the free kick. It's been given to San Antonio. And we have to remember, too, that uh, the coach had to burn an early substitution. We took out Purcell for, for West Knight. So his options on changing things up are actually limited by a third because he's already used one of those subs in the first half. So if he wants to bring in uh, uh, some, some more players or some of the more experienced guys later in the game uh, to, to freshen things up, he's lost an option. Sean Seiko on the left-hand side, playing across to the edge of the penalty area. Pitch Colon clearing that one, and it's a free kick to San Antonio. Here's Soto. Soto right on halfway, playing the ball to the left-hand side, and Kling just drilling this one long, headed away by Hamilton, looking for Lamb. It's Hatchy now. Hatchy bringing it forward to the left-hand side. He's tackled, and Cooey will just calm things down and play it back for Parker, who really had hardly anything to do in that first half, but clears over halfway on this time. The knockdowns being won by San Antonio in the early stages of this second half. We knew they were going to be a different proposition, and here's Soto now. Right-hand side, his uh, attempted cross intercepted by Hatchy, but he's got the ball back. Delicate chip ball over the top of the FC Edmonton defense, picked up by Parker. And throwing it up to the right-hand side, and Craig now Racco forward to Lamb. Lamb holding it up and finding Cooey. It's Racco again, playing the ball to the touchline, and Craig back for Racco. Craig again. All a bit of a scramble, and now Hamilton just puts his foot through the ball, high into the sky, and it's San Antonio that has it back with gold, flipping it up that right-hand side, and out for an FC Edmonton throw-in. They lead 1-0. You already see a massive change there. When Edmonton's trying to play the ball at the back, there was actually pressure. There was white jerseys on the fullbacks, on the center half, when they're trying to play that ball out, which we saw nothing of in the first half whatsoever. So you see, as San Antonio is playing much, much higher, trying to press the ball a lot more, bringing more men forward, uh, unlike they were doing in the first half. And they're, they're really trying to put some pressure now on the, on the defense, which they didn't do at all in the first half. And Nunez playing a through ball there from left to right, diagonal ball from the breaking winger. It looked good, but just over hit. But certainly they've come out a much more hungry looking team in this second half. Yeah, you're actually seeing some white jerseys cross the, cross the halfway line, so that's that's an encouraging thing if you're a Scorpions fan, that you're seeing that the team is starting to move forward now, trying to get uh, to some pressure, uh, trying to, to not make it so easy for the fullbacks and, uh, to play the ball out of their own end. 1-0 FC Edmonton leads, and Racco has a defensive header away from the danger zone. Van Leerdam heading it along as well. Cooey trying to win it back, that ball bobbling up and down in the middle of the field. Seiko looking to find Matt Lamb. Lamb losing out, Van Leerdam winning it back. Gold heading it away. Ball dropping down in the midfield there, and it's Gold again. He's playing a nice little... 1-2 to that ball up the right-hand side, but Hatchy winning it back. It's a slightly disjointed start to the second half. FC Edmonton is struggling to get back possession at the moment. Leading 1-0, and it's now with Seiko. Seiko playing it back for Van Leerdam. Now Matt Lamb. Lamb playing a lovely through ball for Pinto, just slightly over hit, and the goalkeeper making a decisive claim, coming quickly off his line. Very good read there by Daryl Sattler. Doesn't hesitate there. Decides he's going to come out when he sees that ball played off Lamb's foot. If he hesitates, you sure Pinto's going to run onto that and have a real good scoring chance. And uh, that's good keeping to anticipate that play and to not hesitate. Sometimes hes hesitation is so much what kills a goalkeeper in, in situations, not coming out for crosses, not coming out on through balls. But in that case, Sattler was read it very quickly and made a decisive move. Well, we know Matt Lamb's got that killer pass in him and. Uh, very nearly released Pinto one-on-one, -on -one, but very well played by the San Antonio goalkeeper. And they have possession now on the left-hand side. San Antonio trying to claw their way back into this game. They trail 1-0, it's Soto. He's 40 yards from goal, central position. Seiko takes it away from him easily. Plays forward to Van Leerdam, who wasn't quite on the same wavelength, but Pinto is trying to pick up the scraps on the edge of the area. 
San Antonio getting it clear. It's on the halfway mark again for Seiko. He's found Lamb. Lamb's got two men on him, appealing for a free kick that he was caught in the middle of a sandwich there, but not given by the referee. And it's with Rago again. Rago looking for another free kick. This one against uh, Craig. It's been claimed again. The referee just uh, waving play on. 1 0 FC Edmonton lead. Cooey playing a ball to Van Leerdam and escaping a late sliding tackle. It's on the left hand side for Lasson. This is a bit better from FC Edmonton in the second half. Their best spell. Seiko's low cross in. It's going to be dealt with well, but almost won back on the edge there by FC Edmonton. But a chance for San Antonio to clear. With gold up the middle of the field. There's more room there at the moment for Cooey. Cooey will play a pass to the left wing again and it's Sean Seiko back in field to Cooey and now Hamilton chasing forward past halfway and Craig on the right hand side FC Edmonton attacking the goal to our right Craig tries to pull a trick but he's beaten by two men who were teaming up on him there San Antonio still harried by Pinto there and can't really get the ball out of defense. Good work by Edmonton's goal scorer. And he's going to throw in by doing that. Those are the simple things, those little things that make a difference. And FC Edmonton have the ball back with Rago. Rago finds Pinto. Pinto, just the ball wouldn't sit down for him from that throw in. And in the end, he's conceded a free kick. His team leading 1 0 and 52 minutes played so far at Clark Stadium. And you talk about the simple things that Pinto was doing there. That's also about hard work. It's about refusing to give up on the ball. And Leodan playing a ball in from the left-hand side. The shot towards goal, finished beautifully by Seiko. On target again for FC Edmonton. And they have a tuna lead out of nowhere. Yeah, dreadful giveaway. And again, it's uh, it's Soto, again, who's, who, who has been giving the ball away actually kind of regularly. We saw him lose the ball earlier. Uh, Daryl Sadler went out and then talked to him there after the goal was given up. He ran out to, uh, to give him a reassuring pat in the head. But it looks like... Uh, a, a bit of a struggle here for San Antonio and uh, Seiko with a great finish there. Really nice setup by Van Leerdam. Tees it up and Seiko with that shot we talked about. It's uh, no mistake there and, and really no chance for the keeper. And if we thought Tim Hankinson was unhappy before, he will be uh, much unhappier now. Sean Seiko's seventh goal of the season. He doesn't miss them from that range. Very nice setup from Ilya Van Leerdam, who couldn't believe his luck that the ball just dropped for him, and he had pretty much a clear run to just set up Sean. And, and no one challenged him once once they recognized that that, that Van Leerdam had that channel. No one from San Antonio on that back line came out to, to try to to cut off the pass. It was all too easy for him, and it was just a, just just laid it off perfectly for for Seiko to finish the finish the chance. Well, Sean Seiko once again involved in creating and scoring goals for FC Edmonton this afternoon. And great to see the local players playing so well for FC Edmonton. And Seiko again standing out. It's Craig right hand side. Craig trying to get a cross in, but his cross in the end will just drift aimlessly through to the goalkeeper. There's some uh, pushing and shoving after the ball there between Craig and the San Antonio defender, both of them get a yellow card because of it. Yeah, I think some frustration there. They were rolling around a little bit after that ball was played up. They were both sort of giving themselves a hard time to, to get up. It looks like one of those hockey plays where you, you have the, the defenseman holding down the forward. Uh, probably the right call. They're just giving both yellow, settle them both, both down. Fabian uh, Kling, the defender, to get a yellow, and Paul Gray getting a yellow for Edmonton. Yeah, and it's just going to calm the game down a little bit here. We're live on cbc.ca streaming the game today again as all the home games will be this season and on the team 1260 55 minutes beautiful sunday afternoon at clark stadium and a 2-0 cushion for fc edmonton at the moment very professional and disciplined performance so far seiko creating the first goal for pinto and then scoring the second one from a nice setup by Ilya van leerdam Edmonton you know, with another free kick here too. I thought the first five minutes of the second half, San Antonio were playing uh, much more composed than they were any time in the first half, and now it looks like they're falling back into that same habit of falling 
really far back and giving Edmonton tons of space again to uh, to possess the ball and and the giveaways aren't helping you know, either. There's just been some some very poor uh, management, some 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 cockiness on the ball where you think no one's going to come and take the ball away and. And Edmonton really, to be to be to their credit, uh, we're seeing all over the pitch. The players is not giving up on, on 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 chances. We're seeing Pinto challenging all over, saying that I'm not giving up here. Uh, you see Seiko taking the ball away. You see Van Leerdam stolen the ball a few times today. I I, I, I it seems that that uh, they're 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 understanding that the ball is there for the taking, and they're and they're taking that ball back. Very competitive performance from FC Edmonton. A two 0 lead. 56 minutes played, they're attacking the goal to our right, FC Edmonton all in black, and San Antonio playing in the all-white strip that they have. Pitch Colon playing a through ball for San Antonio, a long pass over the top that drifts out for a goal kick. And, and really, you know, going back to that point I was talking about, uh, Edmonton winning back possession so many times, being able to steal the ball. It doesn't come down to X's and O's, that's simply a, a compete level. It's the willingness to be out there and, and the will to win, the will, the will to, to win your chances and win those 50-50 balls. And again, I, you know, I think San Antonio's coach will be disappointed when he sees that second goal and sees uh, the, really the, a lot of the, the, the standing around that happened as, as that goal was, was, was being created. Hachi bringing the ball out of defense and playing it to the left-hand side. Seiko charging towards goal, looking to get the cross in. He's dispossessed. And it'll be picked up by Matt Lamb, but the free kick had been given already to San Antonio, who trailed by two goals to nil. Of course, the scoreline was the exact opposite of this in Texas last Saturday. San Antonio winning that one, 2 nil. And it's a totally different game because I don't I, I think Edmonton was I think in that game was Daryl Sattler who could have uh, gone to the snap bar at times because they didn't create a lot of chances going that way. But it's been a totally different game. It's like the team switched jerseys where San Antonio's done nothing to trouble the keeper and uh, Edmonton's creating the goals. Lasson tidying it up for FC Edmonton and just rifling that ball away from the danger zone. It's uh, in the midfield area again. And a ball over the top, but that's offside. Nunez uh, playing it over the top of the FC Edmonton defense, but the flag straight up, the whistle goes. And a free kick for FC Edmonton. They lead by two goals to nil. We'll see now how Edmonton just, they really should just keep this pressure going. They should get the good feeling here after being shut out last week. It feels good again to get a couple of goals. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's now really that, that shutout in the last month has been an aberration. The offense has been going pretty well for this team in the last, last month or so. There's Parker's free kick to the right-hand side. Craig was going for it. He was beaten to it in the air. It's going to go out for an FC Edmonton throw in. And not to get ahead of ahead of myself or, or the team too much, but this is the beginning of a three-game homestand. And while Edmonton is in is in sixth in the 18, 18 league right now, you have to remember their schedule has been extremely road-heavy so far, simply because the league will not schedule a lot of games here in April and May because of the, the northern climate up here. So the, the the schedule gets a lot friendlier to Edmonton in the summer months. Throw in for Edmonton on the right-hand side. Right down by the corner flag. The goal to our right here is the one they're attacking. Lamb trying to work that ball back for a cross for Rago, but it's San Antonio who have possession back with Pitch Cole, and he's going to play it all the way back to his goalkeeper. That's very dangerous. And asking an awful lot of Sattler, who took a touch and cleared it well, but that... Uh, wasn't the easiest of balls to deal with. Especially with Yashir Pinto standing right there in the, in the, in the box. Uh, uh, you know, I can see you making that play, making that pass back if there's no pressure whatsoever. But uh, Yashir Pinto is right there when he makes this ball, when he makes this play, and it's sort of like, okay, now you're gonna have to beat the striker one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, you put your keeper, yeah, in a lot of uh, trouble. You don't ever want to put your keeper in a situation where he has to take more than one touch on the ball like that. Hamilton sliding down to make a challenge in the middle of the park there, but Riding it well is Greenfield. And tackled by Cooey, winning the ball back in the midfield. Hamilton has it now. Play it back for Rago. Rago forward looking for the Chilean striker Pinto. Bobbling around in that midfield area will be won back by San Antonio. Craig trying to get the ball back, but San Antonio with Soto playing it up down the left hand side now. No offside. There's an opportunity for a cross from this flank now, it's to the edge of the penalty area, and there's the shot, and there's the goal. Nicely finished by Soto from the edge of the box, 
Nothing really that Parker could do about that. And San Antonio back in this match. 2-1 the score now. Great run down the, down the wing there by Ramirez and just no pressure there on Soto there to give him a free shot from the top of the box. No one picked him up. And there, Edmonton, some slack defending. Uh, really, I don't think there was any midfielder who came back to help the back four here. And there has to be a midfielder there on help. And, uh, and just very late arriving. And uh, Soto had all sorts of time to pick that corner. Uh, again, it was a bit of a breakdown there. Midfielder has to come back and help the back four in that situation and, and pick up Soto's run at the top of the box. And, and he was given all the time and the space in the world to finish that chance. 61 minutes gone, it's FC Edmonton 2, San Antonio 1. And now San Antonio's got some life and some belief in a game that uh, really they hadn't created much offensively and, and now they get that chance and they've taken it and done well to take that chance and they put themselves back in the game and now there's some belief here and now you're, again if you're the coach you're starting to think maybe I can get a result out of this, maybe do switch up a couple of players Bring on Campos maybe for 15, 20 minutes and, uh, and see, 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 what, see, what, uh, see what may come. Pinto winning a free kick for FC Edmonton on the left-hand side, just inside the half of San Antonio. Not taken in the uh, correct position for the referee's liking. Who wants a word with Soto. But yeah, if you take a look at Soto's goal, uh, the defenders are sort of in the right position there. They're lining up to, to take away the shot. They need to get help from the midfield, though. Someone's got to track with Soto as he's the trailer on the play, and one of those midfielders has to track him, and no one did. So uh, he was left wide open to have that shot. Antonio Rago in the right-back position for FC Edmonton, playing this one square across the back four. Hamilton now finds Hatchy. Hatchy bringing it forward. Left-footed, switching play all the way to the right-hand side. That's going to be headed away by San Antonio. Trying to win it back is Lamb. Lamb penalized for a little push as he tried to win that tackle. And the free kick for San Antonio, midway inside their own half. Pitch Colon will come forward and take it. That could have given them a bit of tonic that they need. And Ramirez, who set up that goal, is making another run down the left-hand side for San Antonio here. He's found Soto back to Ramirez looking for Soto again. Craig will intercept that one. Rago playing it forward back to Craig. Now Van Leerdam takes a touch. Chases forward nicely Van Leerdam. What a bad effort from him. He'll switch play to the left wing and Seiko. Seiko bearing down on the edge of the penalty area. Onto his right foot. Tries the shot. Just didn't get it to bend enough and it goes past the post and why? Again, Seiko was given way too much time and space uh, to take that shot. The defense peeled off there, and they let him have the shot. And that's a dangerous thing to do with Sean Seiko from what we've seen him shoot before. And you're right, this just doesn't quite have the curl to come inside the post. But uh, a warning sign. I get the feeling this game might not end 2-1. I'm feeling there's some more goals in this one now in the second half. It looks like it's opened up quite a bit. Hinto and Seiko on the score sheet for FC Edmonton. And... Josue Soto for San Antonio. Another substitution here for San Antonio. It's the last action for Nunez. Dennis, Dennison's come in for him, yeah. Yeah, Dennison's, uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, when he played in the Netherlands, his coach was none other than uh, Harry Sinkraven. So, uh, for players who are familiar with his coach and vice versa. So there's, uh, there's a relationship that goes goes back there between the two players. I mean, the two players and, the, and, and coach. See Edmonton not quite able to clear the danger from the edge of their own penalty area here. San Antonio pressing down the right-hand side. Good situation for them here as they try and get the cross into the far post. Not very many white shirts in there, though. And Paul Craig, the man who makes the clearance, out it goes for a throw in to San Antonio. Kling takes it quickly, and Soto to Ramirez again. This is a much better effort by San Antonio in the second half. And they're right back in the match. Trying to play it to the right-hand side with a very poor misplaced pass. And that one just going straight into touch and out for a throw-in to FC Edmonton. And even though Seiko had that chance there uh, a couple of minutes ago where he just put it outside the post, you still feel that San, San Antonio's just been got a charge out of that goal, pushing up again forward, got some life. 
and that's what happens when uh, when you switch off just for a second in this game, you get punished. And Edmonton switched off there, and they allowed San Antonio a, a fairly clear-cut chance. They converted, and uh, now they've uh, they've gave, breathed some life back into their opponents. Gold on the right-hand side. Good break forward by him for San Antonio. They're attacking the goal to our left. There's no offside here, and Parker down at the feet of the forward. Makes a very brave challenge and gets back up and does well to keep his team with a 2-1 advantage. And it's Lamb now at the other end, making a run from the right-hand side. Infield to Craig. Craig's got support from Van Leerdam, and wider than him was Seiko, but the ball hit the back of Van Leerdam and didn't find its target. Lasson has won it back, though, for FC Edmonton. It's with Van Leerdam now, along the deck to Craig. Craig wide to the right, crossing chance maybe for Pinto. Pinto trying to work it through again for Craig, but San Antonio with Ramirez will get the ball clear down the left-hand side. Whistles up for an offside flag there, though, and FC Edmonton will get a bit of a breather and another yellow card show to, this time, Jonathan Greenfield, probably for something that he might have said there, I think. Yeah, I think a little bit of dissent there. And going back to where Ramirez is bringing that ball up before he's thread that ball through on the offside. Uh, again, you look at Yashir Pinto, stuck with him for about 20 yards running back. It's not always something that we see from strikers, is the ability to run back and, and stay with the ball and, and try to win that ball back. And it's nice to see Pinto today, the kind of work rate that he's put in, not just in terms of uh, scoring a goal, but in terms of trying to win the ball back and trying to just be a nuisance up front. He's, I think he's done a very good job, and I've been really impressed with the effort level that he's brought today. Yeah, worked very hard, chasing down loose balls, looking to get blocks in. Good effort by Pinto and a good goal earlier. He's on the score sheet, as is Seiko, and it's 2-1 to FC Edmonton. We're live on the Team 1260 and streaming the game live on cbc.ca slash Edmonton slash soccer. We're approaching the last 20 minutes of this match. Gareth Hampshire and Steve Sandor live from Clark Stadium, 2-1 to FC Edmonton as Rago takes the ball down on his chest. Infield for Cooey. Gave him an awfully hard pass to win, but Cooey rode the challenge and plays it back to Rago. It's now Van Leerdam just trying to turn this one forward to Lamb. Couldn't find him, and Soto will break away with the ball and veers to the right-hand side. Soto then just kicks it out to a more central position. Plays a 1-2 though nicely, and he's got it back from Dennison, the substitute. Rago making a fine sliding tackle though, and that ball's gonna drift all the way back to the goalkeeper for San Antonio. I'd like to see that uh, right after that, Rago went to that challenge with Dennison, they're both down for a second. They both shook each other's hands, helped each other up. Good to see that, good sportsmanship, no no complaining, no looking to the official, just get on with it, realize it's a, it was a good 50-50 challenge and, and move on. Yeah, the game played in good spirit today. It's with Craig again, Craig who's done well. Getting a chance to play in the team today. Pinto goes down under another tackle, there's another yellow card, this one for Pitch Colon, and a free kick about 30 yards from goal for FC Edmonton here. And I guess now the question is going to be, is Sean Sinkle going to shoot or is he going to cross with this? Is he going to try to lob it in? And a little bit of a late challenge there on Matt Lamb uh, coming through and coming through from behind. So that's probably uh, where, where the yellow card comes from. But, but we'll see here if, uh, if, uh, if Seiko is going to square to shoot, if he's going to square to cross. Uh, Paul Hamilton, if there's a cheat on this, is cheating up with the, with the strikers to, to get ahead on this. So it maybe looks like he will try to, to chip this one into the box. Uh, when you see Paul Hamilton move up from his defensive position right up to the top, uh, he is the best header of the ball on the team. So that could be a sign that this one is going to be popped up rather than driven on goal. Hatchy is up there too. The yard the doesn't look 10 yards away, but here's the strike from Seiko. He's gone for goal, and it's just pushed over the top by the goalkeeper. That was a thunderous strike, and bang on target. He's just dipping under the crossbar. Yeah, I guess that was all just a decoy because that was a, a heck of a shot, actually a heck of a save from Daryl Sadler. Shapes his body well to punch this over the bar, and uh, that was labeled, that was going right underneath the crossbar. And again, we're seeing Sean Seiko display that I'll shoot from anywhere, and it's actually pretty good when I shoot from anywhere because it's the right choice uh, most of the time. And uh, from 30 yards out, Daryl Sadler was tested there, and he, and he made a fantastic save. 
Seiko's corner from the right-hand side uh, hits Craig. It was a great chance for him. He probably wasn't aware of it. May have been unsighted with men crowding in front of him there, but it's another chance on the right for Seiko to put it across. Nice curling ball into the far post. Pinto cycles up to try and bicycle kick it, but in the end doesn't get off the ground because it just didn't drop for him, and San Antonio can clear it. It's with gold. We'll play it back to his goalkeeper, Willie Noel. Check and just get it away from Pinto again, who's putting the pressure on. And they play it down the right-hand side, looking for the substitute, Denison. And he manages to get across into the penalty box, and Rago will play it back for Parker, and again, wasn't the best back pass in the world, but Parker got rid of it, and it's with Seiko. Wide to the right, and Paul Craig. Craig has support from Rago. Rago back to Craig, midway inside the San Antonio half, trying to twist and turn and get past his man. He's got past one, but can't beat two. And Ramirez, left-hand side, a bit of a naughty challenge after he'd lost the ball there, just kicking out at Antonio Rago. And a substitution's gonna be made. I'm not sure the official actually saw that, but that's the last of the action from Craig. He's gonna go off for FC Edmonton. Probably a smart move too, he's on a yellow card. You're up a goal, you don't want to take a chance that a silly challenge can, can turn into a red and put you down a man. It looks like uh, Kenny Cacheros is coming in, uh, defensive midfielder, who could come and shore up the defensive line. And uh, yes, Pablo Campos is coming in for San Antonio, so they are going to go for it. Last uh, last 18 minutes, they're going to give this a run with him uh, up, at, up at the top and see if, he, if, he, if one of the best strikers in NASL can create a goal here. Gold is going off for Campos and Cacheros coming on for FC Edmonton as you mentioned there Steve and those are the substitutes 2-1 to FC Edmonton 73 minutes gone and it's Rago's throw and he's right on the halfway mark gets it to Lamb, Lamb playing it back to him but Ramirez sneaking in winning possession back Denison forward to the edge of the area and Campos Lasson gets it away, Seiko on the left hand side tries to get his head on the ball free kick given against FC Edmonton this time and Seiko pushing and shoving after with Janicki there and the referee just gets in the way to try and calm things down the linesman also on the pitch and as they just try and get control of this situation linesman though is coming over to talk to the referee here uh, it looks like maybe the linesman's detected something here that maybe the referee didn't see but uh, looks like they're both here maybe to help split up the players but it uh, looked like uh, Seiko was unhappy that uh, Janicki may have raised his arm a bit in that challenge. And uh, uh, Sean uh, came over to, to the aid of his teammate. But uh, making a point here that uh, Canada unfortunately lost Josh Simpson long term over the last week with his uh, broken leg and ankle in the national team. And I wonder, with that spot being open, and I know it's unusual to pick a second division player for the Canadian national team, but with Sean Seiko's ability to shoot, and his ability to play on the wing or in the middle, if, if maybe that's the player they should bring in and have a look at in the national side uh, as, as a fit, uh, simply because of his ability to play outside, simply because of his ability to shoot the ball and bring some offense to the team. Uh, I, I can't imagine, even as if you bring him as a depth player, that that would be a bad move for this team. They're playing in Toronto next week. It's not a bad trip for him to make. And, uh, you know, maybe that's my, my plea to Stephen Hart. If you're going to fill that that 23rd spot on the roster to replace Josh Simpson, maybe make it Sean Seiko. Denison chasing through the middle away by Hatchie and Cooey heading it along. Only 2-1, San Antonio just with a little bit more of an attacking pep in this second half. Hamilton conceding a corner here. They've got one left wing corner. This is a good opportunity for San Antonio. This is where they can make that height advantage that they have over Edmonton count. A good brave block there from uh, Paul Hamilton on the cross. Right from Ramirez, so I think he's actually picked up his game quite a bit in the second half. But uh, we'll see here how it's going to come on the corner. Denison's corner to the far post. Parker goes up and makes another very strong play. Safe hands there by the FC Edmonton goalkeeper. And you know, you don't want to belabor the point too, too much, but in a situation like that, that's where, where you know that, that Lance Parker has to be brave. And you know, you think back to a year ago, it's a similar play where he had that break of the arm. That's where the goal has got to get over that mental hurdle coming back from that injury the, of, of going up for a similar ball like that and, and being brave when the striker's coming up right on top of you. 
Lamb playing the ball back to Rago. Rago chipping it up down the right wing. Finding Cacheros. Cacheros just loses possession. Dennison playing it forward to Campos. Looking to play it in back. Or Campos, excellent sliding tackle. Covering challenge by Hatchy though. Yeah, Hatch does well because you see in the foot speed race, Hatchy actually loses out to Campos there, like in terms of the speed going forward. But Hatchy smart, makes a well-timed challenge, gets all ball on that, and uh, and and uh, takes that ball away from Campos. But they have to be very, very careful now. Campos is a dangerous, dangerous player. San Antonio has totally changed the way they're playing. 2-1 FC Edmonton lead, but they're defending here as San Antonio attack down the right-hand side. Chance for Soto, edge of the penalty area. Squares it up for maybe a long shot, but they switch play to the flank. Ramirez from the left-hand side, trying to get to the goal line against Lamb. Cuts the ball back, and it's going to be cleared by Rago to the halfway mark, looking for Pinto. It's taken away from him and played to the left-hand side. Kept in play by San Antonio, but in fact, the flag up for an offside. And FC Edmonton will have possession. They lead 2-1. Live on the Team 1260. And streaming the game live on cbc.ca. We are approaching the last 10 minutes. And it's Antonio Rago with a free kick for FC Edmonton. Midway inside his own half. On the right-hand side. And he puts this up in the air. Pinto's the target. Pinto's beaten in the air. Drops in the midfield. And Cooey gets ahead on it. And Lamb will now move forward with the ball. He's beaten one man, he's tackled by the second, but under pressure he gets a free kick. We've just seen Seiko go very close from almost this exact scenario a moment ago. And although Van Leerdam tries to take this quickly, <laughs> it's not going to be allowed. It will be probably the chance for Sean Seiko again here. Yeah, and I, I think that no one in Santos is going to be surprised now if he takes this shot 30 yards out uh, after that last try. I, I, I'm feeling pretty good he's going to try it again unless there's a change up here and there's a surprise where he tries to pop it in. Uh, Paul Hamilton, though, is hanging back now. Uh, you can see that he's not coming up to, to go for the header. Hatchy's hanging back. They're obviously keeping their defenders back now, uh, worried about the counter. So that even sets it up more and more that Sean's just going to hammer this from just over 30 yards out. 30 and a half yards. Just right of center. Sean Seiko takes it with the right boot and it's just going to go over the angle this time. Those, uh, they always look closer in the game, but still just a couple of yards wide on that occasion. Yeah, not quite as, uh, as stung as the last attempt toward goal. But again, you know, you, you're, you're troubling the keeper. You're staying in that area. Uh, and again, it's not the wrong way for him to be shooting at all. That's, a, that's, that's something he's got to do every time, in my opinion. He's just too dangerous out there. Uh, to be to be trying to pass that ball or trying to make a cross. He's got to be firing that towards goal anytime he's in within that 30 yards. Going into the last 10 minutes and it's getting a bit ugly in the uh, middle of the field there. Some pushing and shoving by Ramirez on the Edmonton captain, Cooey. The official's whistle is gone, but there's just a crowd of players midway inside the FC Edmonton half there. The uh, players all in black and those all in white, they're being separated now to their various official sides of the pitch. But there could be some more cards shown when the dust settles here. You know, and I think this is the, the, the what happens when you have two teams play each other in two consecutive weeks. Last week was a very physical game, as you said, some Edmonton players left the game with some bumps and bruises. Fabian Bohr broke his nose. It was Ramirez that broke his nose with that challenge. Uh, on, on, on him in, in, in the face and uh, Ramirez gets a yellow card here for, for uh, jumping into the pile there and, and shoving Chris Cui. But uh, we'll have a look here at uh, how this all started here. And it was Dennison there in the challenge with Seiko. Cui and him go up together and uh, it looks like their heads clash. Dennison takes a swing at Cui there, then he gets tripped up and Leardam gets involved. Uh, a lot of chippy stuff in between there. Probably could have been more cards handed out if the referee really wanted to. But this is a situation you got to talk to the teams, get them calmed down. And, and again, this is uh, two teams playing each other back-to-back -back games. Some bad blood. Two very physical games that we've seen so far. And uh, really, I'm surprised that uh, the way this game is going, uh, I'd be surprised if this is going to finish 11 versus 11. Well, Ramirez deserved the yellow card because he actually had nothing to do with the original challenge and just came in 
to, to add his two penneth to it. Yeah, and, it, and you saw Dennis in there, he was frustrated. He took a bit of a, a, a little swing there at Kui as he went by when he was getting up from that challenge. Uh, it's a tough tackling game, and right now the tempers are on edge for both teams. Uh, and uh, again, you know, <laughs> 10 minutes to go, there's still a lot of time left, and we've seen a lot of scuffles in the last 10 minutes or so. And again, I think a lot of this is boiling over even from last week in San Antonio as well. That's Steve Sandor. I'm Gareth Hampshire. We're live on the Team 1260 and cbc.ca. We're into the last 10 minutes now. FC Edmonton with a 2-1 lead at Clark Stadium. Um, play restarted from a drop ball <coughs> and now from a throw-in from the right-back position for San Antonio. They play the ball down the right-hand side and win themselves another throw. Just inside the FC Edmonton half. Attacking from right to left, San Antonio. And they've got a free kick now. This is menacing again. The free kick level with the edge of the penalty area. Dennison's going to take it. They've thrown pretty much everyone forward now. San Antonio. The last eight minutes of the game. FC Edmonton having to hold their defensive nerve and concentration. In comes the ball. Headed towards goal. And it's in. It's the equaliser, and it's finished by Janicki, who gets his head on it at the near post, and it's 2-2. You know, and again, that's the set piece, and that's been the, the Achilles heel for Edmonton all season long, is the, uh, is the, is the set piece, is the corners, the free kicks. We saw San Antonio score a goal like this last week when Ryan Cochran scored, and again, it's a header. No one really marking him up front. He's going to win that battle, and again, Edmonton losing because they don't have the height uh, to, to battle these, these uh, set pieces. And really, a 2-0 game that they had well in hand uh, in 60 minutes through this match has turned into a fight now to hold on to a point. And uh, really, really has been a poor finish here from FC Edmonton after a very, very good first 60 minutes of this game. I think it was Pitch Colin got the final touch. Again, those white numbers hard to pick out in the penalty area. Yeah, confirmation, Pitch Colin getting the header and a 2-2 scoreline and all of a sudden the atmosphere just a little bit flat. And, and again, this is going to be something this that FC Edmonton has to work on. If they're going to want to move up the standings, this, the, the, the set pieces are, have been killing this team all season long and uh, the, their, their play on corners, their play on free kicks has got to improve. They're giving up too many goals, too many chances uh, on, on these set plays. We can think back to the game against Minnesota, where Minnesota won the game here on, on a last second throw, a uh, long throw. We can think of the goals they gave up to San Antonio last week that Ryan Cochran scored on a free kick. We see another one on a, on a, on a corner here. Uh, with Pitch Colin, or, or, or in a set piece with Pitch Colin. It's, it's, it's too much uh, that uh, Edmonton's not defending these plays, not getting tough, not, not picking up men, and uh, just too many free chances the other team is getting. And this is really becoming the, uh, the Achilles heel for this FC Edmonton team. Parker with the free kick for FC Edmonton, trying to play it to the left-hand side. It will go out for a throw-in going to have about five minutes plus probably a couple of minutes of stoppages and FC Edmonton are going to make a substitution here. Van Leerdam's the man going off. He replaced by Dominic Upon. So basically like for like there. Yeah, Dominic will give a little bit more defensive strength than, uh, than Ilya will. He will have the offensive flair that, uh, that Ilya has, so maybe a little bit more of a defensive move. But, uh, you know, I think uh, Edmonton's going to have got to go for, for this, this third goal and try to still get these three points. They're really going to feel like they've thrown some points out the window here if they don't come back. Hamilton heading away from the danger zone there. Soto getting the loose ball and playing it out to the right-hand side. Lassonde winning it, heading it forward towards Seiko. Picked back up, though, by San Antonio, away by Lassonde. Lassonde doing well to pick out Sean Seiko, who had a good attack going there, and the referee could have played an advantage but did not. Maybe felt that there was no other option. And it's going to be an FC Edmonton free kick way back in there. Oh, on either. You know, and, and, and set pieces are such an important part of this game. And the ability to defend them and the ability to 
to, uh, to, to, to to deal with those situations. And I think you just go back, I think a lot of, all of us watched the Champions League final a couple of weeks ago. The Bayern Munich absolutely outplays Chelsea. They mess up on one corner and it costs them the European title. And he, this happens over and over. It's not about X's and O's. It's about being able to mark up and mark a man and get strong to the ball, get ball side, goal side. And if you can't do it, it, you basically sabotage a lot of the good work you do in open play if you can't play on set pieces. Pitch goal and the scorer of that second San Antonio goal, meaning it's 2-2, playing the ball forward. Cooey finds Rago, though. The last three minutes now, Rago from the right-hand side. Takes his time, now puts in the cross to the near post. Headed away by San Antonio. That ball's going to drift down by the corner flag. And will go out for a throw-in to San Antonio. 2-2. Just a couple of minutes left, the throw in down the line. Controlled by Campos, who's making a break down the left hand touchline. Showing a good stride of pace. Cutting in field towards the edge of the area and striking it well and just past the post. And that looked really threatening for a moment. And that's why you see that Pablo Campos is one of the best strikers in NESL. And, and really, I believe that last year when Etienne Barbara had such a great season with. Uh, with Carolina, a lot of that was because of the partnership with Campos and the way they work together. Uh, not 100% sure that Barbara without Campos is an effective player. We'll see in Vancouver down the road if that's what happens. But, uh, but Campos there shows uh, exactly how he can turn really nothing into something in that situation. And it's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous for Edmonton. Middle of the field, Cooey heading a ball back. Rago going to chase that one down. Pushing it forward down the right-hand side. Lamb has given this one away. And it's going to be with Fabian Kling. And Dennison's made a break towards the edge of the penalty area. They're saying he's tried to handle it. The Edmonton players, referee, sees nothing wrong. And a Pong, though, has loads of green grass ahead of him here. And lots of space, but he's not picked a good pass. He's given the ball away. We have seen quite a few unforced errors today. And that's another one that will cost FC Edmonton possession. You know, on, honestly, I, I, Harry St. Brown is going to be so disappointed with how uh, how FC Edmonton's played this last 20 minutes of the match. Um, when you're dominating a game, you can't you can't put in 60 or 70 minutes work. It's got to be 90. And uh, they've really backed off in the last 20 minutes. And it's uh, they, they've just op they opened the door for San Antonio to walk through. And uh, really, it's got to be a lot of disappointment here. Again, defending set pieces, but just giving now San Antonio too much time and space. Uh, maybe what San Antonio was guilty of doing early in the game, Evans is guilty of doing now. It's 2-2 at Clark Stadium. Free kick for FC Edmonton from halfway. Whipped up to the edge of the penalty area. Cleared by San Antonio. Good firm defense by the visitors. 2-2 scoreline. Seiko this time trying to switch play to the right-hand side. But again, San Antonio clearing it easily. Dennison flicking it forward towards Ramirez, who got in behind the back four, but Parker comes up to clear the ball. Lamb, that's immaculate control on the thigh there, actually, from a, such a high clearance. But he has won himself a throw-in for FC Edmonton, and we've played almost 90 minutes, so FC Edmonton need to get moving if they're going to get a winning goal here. 2-0, he just really looked such a cruise control position and somehow okay. San Antonio you have to give them credit have battled back into this and are level pegging now with FC Edmonton it's Dominic Pong middle of the park playing the ball back to Hatchie and all the way back to Parker Parker digging it out to the right hand side but Ramirez beats Drago to the ball but he doesn't beat Hamilton Hamilton finding Lamb, Lamb crossing halfway I'm trying to play a through ball for Seiko, but he just sliced it slightly too far, and it's picked up by the San Antonio goalkeeper. We've played 90 minutes. It's time added on now. It's the most time added on. He's only adding for three minutes. I'm a little bit surprised it's that little amount of time, considering the pushing and shoving matches we've seen and the cards that went out, the goals that were scored. I'm, uh, I'm surprised it's as little as three. Edison playing a ball to the edge of the area for San Antonio. It's another chance for Cacheros to bring the ball forward. One of the FC Edmonton subs. It's found Lamb over halfway. Lamb cuts in field but has played a rather loose pass. 
couldn't pick out Brago. Hamilton winning it back again, though. Another full-blooded challenge. And really refusing to give in Paul Hamilton. Ball over the top, Campos chasing. Parker gets out first to that one and clears it straight up the middle of the field. Hatchy heading it forward from the resulting rebound and now finding Dominic Opong who takes it on the chest and finds Lasson. Lasson just inside his own half. FC Edmonton attacking from left to right. It's with Lamb, edge of the penalty area. He's bundled over. They're appealing for a free kick. It's not been given. San Antonio just with a little bit more bite at the moment. And trying to play out time here. This is... Uh, Something they're going to be happy with if they can hold on to this point to the edge of the Edmonton penalty area. Cooey wins it back. Might be a last break here for Seiko. Seiko darting in from the left-hand side to a central position. He's just run it a bit too far. It's been kicked away from him. Hamilton gets it back. It's with a pong. Now Cooey. Cooey, the captain, playing a wide ball to the left-hand side. He's given it away. And it's cleared again by San Antonio, all the way through to Parker. I was a little bit surprised when Sean Seiko was running with that ball. He got to about the 30-yard line. I was surprised he was trying to take on defenders. I thought maybe he had a little bit of space there. Maybe it was time to square to shoot for him. Uh, you know, and how, how good he's been at finding his range today. That might have been a situation where the best thing to do is put his foot through the ball. We're deep into stoppage time on the Team 1260 at cbc.ca. FC Edmonton 2. San Antonio to Cooey wide to the left wing. Seiko making a break to the penalty box there. Sean Seiko, but the pass couldn't find him. And it's going to be Sattler who will take as much time as he can with the ball inside of his own area here. He now picks it up and will bounce it a few times and roll it out to the left hand side here. San Antonio left full back's got about 30 Eddie's yards of space. to the edge of the penalty area. Campos. Campos takes on two or three. It's a good little mazy run by him, but Hachi has got the ball back. And Hachi makes a run to the halfway mark himself. He finds Pinto, holding it up well for Apong, who plays a lovely ball in behind the fullback to Hachi. Hachi appealing for a decision. The referee gives nothing. And that is the end of the play. And ending it in a very flat way for FC Edmonton with a 2-0 lead goals from Pinto and then from Sean Seiko putting them in the box seat but San Antonio clawing a point out of this one coming back to get a 2-2 tie and you know you also have to go back and nod to Daryl Sandler for the save that he made on Seiko's free kick that would have made it 3-0 uh, that was a, a great save that he made, kept his team within two, and then they made that charge back. But uh, some real slack defending on the first goal to let Soto have all that space uh, to get it, make it 2-1. And then again, uh, again, we just can't really hammer the point enough, I guess, about set pieces burning this team again. Dennison with the delivery, pitch Cole with actually a fairly easy finish, uh, considering how wide open he was on that, on that set piece and uh, made no mistake with the header. And, and again, as we've seen so often this year, a set piece takes points away from FC Edmonton. And we can start adding up the games that they've lost, points that they've thrown away because of an inability to defend set pieces. We will be back with our post-game wrap-up in just a few moments. The full-time score, FC Edmonton 2, San Antonio 2. Ya lo hace, pierna derecha, directo al arco, golazo.
Hunger is our planet's greatest solvable problem. Around the world, people everywhere are affected by hunger. Let's make a difference. Join us and help stop hunger. Text WFP Hunger to 45678 to donate $5 to the World Food Program. Welcome back to Clark Stadium. A share of the spoils for both teams, FC Edmonton 2, San Antonio 2. Let's go pitch side to join the visiting coach again, Tim Hankinson. We talked to you at halftime. Tim, thanks for joining us again. Obviously, Absolutely. you wanted more from your team. What made the difference for you in the second half, do you think? Well, I, I think it was a volatile locker room that, you know, guys needed to be shaken up and, uh, you know, play more aggressively, play with a greater determination to uh, force their game on the opponent. I thought we did a better job with that in the second half. Our possession picked up. Uh, we had to take some risk when, uh, you know, the second goal went in against us, and uh, we switched our system into more of a 4-3-3, brought in Hans Dennison, uh, brought in uh, Pablo Campos, and I think the momentum swing went our way, and it put us back in the game. And tell us how much you felt set pieces might be a threat for you, which, which turned out to be the equalizing goal there. Well, we certainly have uh, a great height advantage over a lot of the teams in the league, and, you know, we had a goal uh, just like that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, with Ryan Cochran, so that was, uh, you know, scoring that way builds confidence. Uh, guys start sniffing that that anything's possible when a call is made, and you're going to get to put a free kick in the the box. Um, it was an awkward game because, you know, we're trying to manage legs for the Open Cup Tuesday, traveling tomorrow, and uh, it was good that we rested some players. But uh, you know, again, it's it's hard not to put out your best lineup every game. And uh, hopefully we don't have as tight a schedule in the future to have to do it again. A couple of games you've played with FC Edmonton in the space of a week now. What do you make of the look of the Edmonton team? Well, you know, they're, they're very consistent in their 4-3-3. The triangle in the midfield always presents a problem. We tend to play more of a 4-4-2, so we've got to always make some adjustments to make sure we don't lose from the, the, the numerical advantage in the center. Um, the wing play keeps our backs pinned so that they can't get forward naturally uh, like we'd like them to. But, you know, a lot of the teams in the league are playing a 4-3-3, so we're seeing the same thing week in, week out, and I think you just get better at playing against it. Thank you again, Tim. All right, all the best. Thanks. That's Tim Hankinson, who uh, joined us at halftime. Definitely wanted to see a big response from his team in the second half, and he certainly got it. Yeah, and, and again, he talked about the height advantage, and it's, it, it was clear on, that, on, the, on the second goal. But... Uh, uh, you got that feeling that at any time that San Antonio late in the game had those set pieces in Edmonton's territory that it was danger time for, for FC Edmonton. And sure enough, one of those chances did pay off. And was scored by Aaron Pitch Colon, who's going to join us from pitch side as well. And remember, we saw him in the NASL last season uh, playing up here for Puerto Rico. He's back this time with San Antonio. Well played there, Aaron. Uh, tell us what gave you the difference in that second half. Uh, yeah, I think it was just uh, just a lot of heart. Um, uh, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a great first half from us. But uh, we really came through in the second half and uh, they got a result. Uh, we talked to your coach at, at halftime and he, he didn't seem very pleased at <laughs> all with, with the performance. Can you give us a bit of an insight into the, uh, the halftime discussion there? Uh, yeah, there was, uh, there was probably a little bit of yelling in the locker room. Uh, he definitely wasn't happy, but uh, you know the guys, the guys really came through in the second half and uh, we made some changes um, and uh, it worked out for the best. And coach talked about the height advantage that you have against quite a few of the teams. Just talk us through your goal, the set piece that, that got things tied up for you. Yeah, we, we try to do a good job of, of setting up uh, set pieces, especially in training. Uh, so we work on, on that a lot. Uh, Hans just put in a, a great ball to the front post and I was able to get ahead of my defender and, and luckily it was on, on frame. And when those drop to you in those situations, it, the angles are, are never easy to judge. What's on your mind when the ball's coming at you like that, even uh, when you've got that space? Yeah, I mean, you, you just try to keep it simple, just, just something on, on frame. Um, even if it doesn't go, uh, doesn't go in right away, maybe the goalie will deflect it or maybe it'll fall to a teammate. Now, you're obviously back with an expansion team, do, doing extremely well so far. What, what's been the secret for you this season? Uh, I, I just think it's, uh, it's just a good organization from top to bottom. Uh, great ownership, um, good players, just good good guys all around. So uh, I think that translates on the field. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, thank you, guys. Well played. That's uh, Aaron Pitch Colon, whose uh, equalizing goal was heartbreaking, really, for FC Edmonton with a 2 0 advantage, Steve. You wouldn't really have thought that would be the outcome. No, and, and again, I think we'll, we'll see what uh, Coach Harry St. Gravin has to say in a second here. But I think that there'll be some disappointment in the way that FC Edmonton finished this game. 2 0 up. This is a, a draw that feels like a loss. Well, we will hear from Harry Sinkraven, the FC Edmonton coach. He's down there on the touchline, um, and we will talk to him right away. Thank you, uh, 
for joining us again. Harry, we'll uh, come to you right now. Thanks for your time. Um, obviously, commiserations. We, we talked to you in the first half. I think he might be having problems hearing us at the moment, Harry. Um, so we will try and rectify that situation. There's Pinto, who got the first goal. And he was impressive today. Seiko got the second one. Uh, at that point, things looked really good. Uh, Harry, what went wrong at that, at, as far as you could see it in the second half there? Well, in the second half, that uh, the moment we scored 2-0, uh, then we had control the, about the game. But uh, after that, they uh, they brought some uh, subs in and, and they, they played a little bit different. And then we lost control, uh, especially in midfield. Uh, so that's why we uh, subbed uh, Dominic in and Kenny Caceres to make the midfield a little bit stronger. But we lost control about the game, and, and if you look then, the, 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 the second goal, set piece, well, and, and we said before, before the game, we said, well, if they score, they score a counter-attack or they score out of set piece. So be aware, uh, and, and, and yeah, one of the guys is not alert, and goal. And so in spite of drilling, trying to drill that into your players, Harry, how concerned have you been about conceding goals from set pieces this season? Well, till uh, the last week we had two. Uh, before that, uh, I don't know exactly, but especially the last the last week, two uh, two goals out of set pieces, and that's that's not good, of course. It, it, what does this do for confidence? It, things look really good at two 0 The crowd was right into it, and it finished a little bit flat. What, what will your message to the players be now? Well, it's 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 uh, three ways. It's a, it's a mental thing. Uh, so okay, you're disappointed two nil uh, two nil, and then they score two one two two. So it's a mental thing. So that's one. Uh, two, it's also a tactical thing. Uh, so so organize it well. So uh, in 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 the field, uh, if you see that they're going to play a little bit different, then organize it quickly. And uh, and, and and we didn't do that. And uh, yeah, and, and then you're asking for troubles, right? Thank you again, Harry. Okay. That's Harry Sink Raven. Uh, he'll be bitterly disappointed at this one today. He's seeing his team lead 2 0, and you can see there he, uh, I think, expected much more in the second half. Yeah, and I guess he talked about the, the, the unhappiness when San Antonio went to that 4 3 3, when they brought in Campos and they brought in Dennison, and, and, and he was frustrated at Evans's inability to adjust in time. And, uh, and again, set pieces, he said two in the last two weeks. But I think we go back to the Minnesota game and we go back to some of the road games, we can count quite a few more goals on set pieces that this team has given up. Let's go back to pitch side and join Sean Seiko. At, 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 when his goal went in, things looked pretty good. Sean, thanks for joining us. Uh, just tell us w where things went wrong after that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we got a little bit defensive. Um, we, can't, we, can't, we can't do that. I mean, we got a young squad and we got to learn from this ex uh, exactly what we did. Um, we went up two goals and, and usually you get the third one and, uh, and it's over. But um, they always say the two goal, two goal uh, lead is probably the worst one because they get one and then they're putting all the pressure on. So um, it's definitely something we got to learn, uh, learn from and, and, and we're obviously disappointed. But uh, I mean, we still got a point, I guess. Let's uh, obviously lots of good things you can take from the game and, and the two goals being those. Let's let's start with your one that that gave you the the 2-0 lead. Just to talk us through that, please. Uh, I mean uh, the, the the right fullback slipped a little bit and um, Ilya picked the ball up on the left hand side and he just started going to goal and, and the defender kind of stayed off me, which was a little bit un, uh, unusual. So I kind of just stayed in the pocket and he feet great pass and, and and I had a little bit of composure to put in the, in the left hand corner. And prior to that, the first one, a, a nice little ball by you to, to pick up Pinto. Talk us through that one. Yeah, I mean, that was something we were uh, working on in training. Um, we need to get balls in, in, in the box and, and try and get them on their heels. And, and you know what? Uh, credit to Harry. He gave us a good game plan and, and uh, we executed all right. But like I said, we're, we're obviously really disappointed after... Uh, can see those two late goals. I, I suppose it's one of those where, it, when it's a draw, but it does it feel like a defeat to the players today? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you're you're definitely in the driver's seat, and um, we give up two late goals like that. Uh, you know, we we gotta definitely learn from that because those are two points that we'll never get back now. 
how do you regroup from here, Sean? I mean, it was one of those home games where the crowd really seemed into it at 2-0. You then had that free kick that, that almost dipped under the crossbar. There were situations where you might have got the third. What will the discussion be in the dressing room now to lift yourselves up from this? I think exactly what I said. Uh, we need to we need to have the, the confidence that just because we're up 2 nothing, we've got to still play. We can't sit back on our heels and let them come at us and sit in our box and... and and try and defend a two-goal lead because uh, that's not the way uh, you want to play. You want to get three, maybe four, and uh, give the fans something to cheer about. Um, the fans are fantastic today. They all came out and, and they were chanting and everything, and it was fantastic. And, and hopefully we can give them a better showing uh, next game. Um, we played okay. We played okay to give them a, a bit of things to cheer about. And obviously the results are disappointing, but uh, we're happy uh, for next week and, and we'll get ready. Well played, Sean. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. That's Sean Seiko on the score sheet again today and also setting up a goal as well. And uh, certainly he doesn't deserve to be on the losing team. Uh, and it's not the losing team, it's a draw. But as he says, it feels like that. Yeah, and you know, you, the one points aren't going to get you climbing up the standings here. We see Edmonton holding on to six. Uh, they do have games in hand on Carolina and Atlanta behind them who are winless and struggling. So you're starting to see maybe there's a bit of a gap forming, but still not enough of a gap to say, oh, Carolina, Atlanta are anywhere buried or anything like that. But with the, with the games coming up, with you know, this is the first of three home games in a row, three Sundays in a row. Edmonton's got to take advantage of these of these home matchups, do some climbing up the standings, and uh, you know it really begins, as Sean said, about not backing off when you've got that advantage, trying to press that advantage rather than than all of a sudden maybe moving to a defensive posture, and as well got to get onto the training pitch and start organizing a lot better on those set pieces because there have been a lot of goals this year it's been quite a few and uh you know you can you you you, you end 30 or 40 minutes of great work with one messed up set piece san antonio you can see in third edmonton in sixth those teams playing to a 2-2 tie today let's take a look at the highlights from the game well, seiko involved very early on and this was just needed a flick Great delivery there. And Sean Sega was dangerous anywhere from the 40-yard line, of, and I'm talking about the football pitch in today, uh, really was, was creating problems all over the pitch. Was the best player on the pitch out of either of the two teams. Uh, really uh, forced Daryl Sauter to make some good saves as well. Sean Seiko with that shot just over the top, but finding his range. And that's the range for the cross. Beautiful ball for Pinto and just a glancing header to give Edmonton a 1-0 lead. Yeah, and you can see that one was coming. Uh, San Antonio was pinned back in their own end. They just had the goal call back for offside a couple of minutes before, which Sean Sego delivered the cross to Paul Craig. And here's the giveaway, the fall down, but really that ball should never have gone back. And as Sean said, no, no one picked him up. He was surprised to say there's no defender on him. And no one picks up uh, Sean Sego at the top of the box. And really, this is a, this is a simple right-footed strike for him. Just passed it into the net, really, didn't he, Steve? Didn't need to do much. Daryl Sadler didn't really have much of a chance. San Antonio coming back strong, though, in this second half. Ramirez with that ball and just drilled in by Soto. Yeah, really and took again, it well. And again, this is there, there's got to be a midfielder who tracks back with Soto here to pick him up. Hatchie's not in the wrong spot there. Hatchie's guarding the top of the box. Someone has to track that run from the midfield and say, like, someone's got to take Soto. No one did and gave him a very easy chance there. Pitch Colin called for a yellow card for that challenge. It resulted in this free kick, which was a corker from Seiko, but an excellent save. Yeah, and I'm really this that, that that's as big as the, the, the tying goal for San Antonio. Because again, that gives San, Edmonton the two, two, two goal lead back. There's the set piece that got them the point. Pitch Colin's header. And it was too easy. Really, it's it's too easy. You don't see pitch Cole and having to leap up over a defender and try to get ahead to it he's got an open header and again this is something we saw we saw last week with Ryan Cochran against San Ant uh, in San Antonio and now Atlanta comes to town next week a winless Silverbacks team coming to Edmonton Edmonton's already beaten the Silverbacks this year on the road they need to take three points in this match and and work on tightening up some things in the back and if you can't make that game Atlanta against Edmonton June 3rd here at Clark join us on CBC and the team 1260. Well, a point at home for FC Edmonton today, a 2-0 lead, but ending up in a 2-2 tie against 
San Antonio. FC Edmonton 2, San Antonio 2. Dixon. 